welcome to the tee from Texas, Jordan Spieth. The 2012 and 2014 PGA champion, Roy McElroy. And now on the tee, the 1999, 2000, 2006, 2007 PGA champion from Florida, Tiger Woods. Woods, McElroy, and Spieth all finding the 10th fairway. And on behalf of golf fans, just want to thank the PG of America for putting this threesome together. How good a watch is this going to be, Scott? It doesn't really, it could it get any better than this? I mean, three of the most compelling guys in golf, obviously the most compelling, but then two other guys that are right there on the, on the mantle, you know, right on the doorstep of trying to enter Tiger's world. And wow, it's fantastic. Best angle out of those three tee shots for this threesome. Well, I, I think they're all good because the pin is right in the middle on the front. Um, but the, the one thing I did notice there is that golf swing by Tiger Woods was a lot different than what we watched yesterday for two or three holes. That one, he had speed and assuredness and velocity with that. And yesterday he looked a little tired. I think I, I, you know he's ready. What are the moments like this as, you, as you're just starting your major championship week? You just want to slow down, stay calm, walk slow, uh, breathe deep, and just get into your game and forget that it's the PGA and it's you against Southern Hills. What will you need to see early from Tiger Woods to think, okay, maybe he had something this week? I think just solid ball striking. I mean, like that was a great, like I said, that golf swing looked very forceful and, and like the vintage Tiger Woods to me. Um, so fairways, greens, um, you know, whether he makes a lot of birdies or a bunch of putts is obviously that's good. But I just want to, if he's striking the ball solid, he'll, he'll hang around. What I'm excited to see out of Tiger this week and with the renovation, you mentioned the slopey greens, they have all the shaved areas now around these green complexes is the creativity and the imagination you can use with the variety of short game shots. Well, there, there's no question you're going to have, you could miss a green and, and roll off two steps or you could miss a green and roll off 20 steps. Um, and yeah, you could use anything from like a fairway metal to your 60 degree to a seven iron, uh, just depending on your lie, what the grain of this Bermuda grass, how it's laying between you between your club and the ball and how much green you got to work with a, a year ago PGA Championship week thinking that we would have Tiger Woods in a featured group here at Southern Hills Country Club you would have thought there was absolutely no chance no I don't even, it wasn't even on the books <laughs> you wouldn't have been you wouldn't have been able to get any kind of wager on it because it wasn't even possible so very cool Let's take a look at the opening tee shot. And Scott, you're saying you saw more speed out of the swing from Tiger Woods. I just, like I said yesterday, I was a little worried because he looked a little tired. But 
They just look normal right here. I mean, that's an iconic golf swing, an iconic picture right there, isn't it, George? It's amazing how, how smooth his swing looks with all the back surgeries and the leg injury. Un unbelievable, actually. Everything he's gone through in his career. Four. 17 up it. Yep. This is 25 on it. What do you want to pitch it? I mean, on it or just past it? I mean, yeah. on it's going to just sort of skip up and come back at us. Perfect. Show me off your right with smooth. Okay. Got it? Yeah. Little right to left win. This, this shot plays up eight yards, so this is all about. They were talking about trying to land it pin high and have it skip forward and then maybe come back towards the hole a little bit. And this right out about 120 ish yards if you're going to carry it a few past. And as you mentioned, eight up. McElroy's approach. That they barely leveled out that yeah. front left on 10 there, and they leveled it out just enough to keep that ball from rolling all the way down towards the creek. Uh, what is it? Oh, seven. Is it 10? That's for the whole plane, or both plane, or 15. Yes. And you're right, Scott. That's exactly what they did that for, so the ball wouldn't roll all the way off the edge. Now for Jordan, this right at 100 yards, 110 yards is the number. A couple paces past the flag. Wind laid down. the slope there, George, because the greens were only rolling about 10 and a half, 11, and that ball is just trickling, trickling, trickling. So birdie putts coming up for Speed and McElroy. Now it's Tiger Woods' turn. This right in between wedges for Tiger. Let's see if he flights a little three-finger pitching wedge here. No, he took the high route. Needs to carry. Good way to start. Fairway, check. Green, check. Five feet now for birdie. Another look at the replay. It'd be closer than five feet. How pretty is that? Well, the result is fantastic. I think he was trying to fly it to the hole and it looks like the ball may have kind of rode up the face just a little bit which worked out perfect because it didn't have a lot of spin on it and it just released right up pin high but that's part of the game and that's why he's as good as he is. You're saying the 10th hole a birdie hole you need to take advantage Tiger the only one of the three really in there close. Yeah they all, they all have a putt at it. Jordan's lucky because he'll get Rory to. Rory will be away and, and Jordan will get a pretty good read off Rory's putt. But um, you can see the wind picking up. If Tiger knocks that in, that's a fantastic start. Take a look at the three approach shots out of this threesome Tiger Woods as a little more than three feet speed inside 17 Rory 23 feet for birdie. All three left of this pin that is front right. So they all are putting uphill just a little bit so that's 
they're in the proper spot. Um, they're all makeable. Obviously, Tigers is makeable. I wouldn't say I'd expect it, but they, they, you can make it from there. Not a whole lot of break from where both of the Rory and Jordan are putting from. And therein lies the problem, Scott, is that there isn't a whole lot of break. Uh, it, it wants to overall move to the right towards the front of the green. But the influence from the bunker, that little knoll halfway through is going to kick it to the left. So your pace has to be just perfect as it's dying. It should wander off to the right. The classic double breaker. The classic double breaker. Just what you want for your first putt of the day. So far, the 10th actually playing under par. But very early in this opening round. McElroy's birdie putt on the way. Routine par for McElroy on his first hole of the day. Yeah, I'll be interested to see as the as the round as the tournament goes on how many putts we see like that because the greens are a little bit slower than what these guys are used to. And there's an, there's some adjustment to be made and it's it's hard to make it on the golf course. You have to have it done before you get here. So. It, the speed of putts around here is going to be an enormous factor. Touching on the speed of putts, how, how will that impact someone like Jordan Spieth, who's been struggling with the putter this year? It, could that be a positive, or do you think that would, well, would hurt him? It, it, well, it could be. It could go either way, George. I, I think if he feels like he's hitting solid putts, it could be a real positive because you're going to have to hit him very solid to get him to go the distances you want. Can Spieth heat the putter up? For birdie. I really think we're going to see a lot of that until someone's going to figure the speed out first and they're going to they're going to start they're going to be making those putts because you'd like to putt uphill here. I mean you have to putt uphill here but you got to figure out how to get them there. Par for speed and now it's Tiger Woods for birdie. Add anything to this? Just a bunch of nerves. Straight as a string. Ned, this guy does not have nerves. <laughs> I was say, with nerves and Tiger Woods. <laughs> Woods to birdie out of the gates. One under through one. Dream start for Tiger Woods. Woods just one off the lead at the moment. We got three players tied at two under par. Well, he looks pretty excited about it, doesn't he? That's that is the classic tiger right there. He doesn't get excited until the very end when it really matters, but he just stays the same and I expect him to be that way all day. He's not going to get two up or two down. What's one, that one reason that makes him great? What's that dynamic like when you're playing the same group as him? Well, when the things get really popping and he's chipping in and making long putts and stuff and he's fist pumping, that's, that's more like a football game than a golf tournament. But um, he knows there's a lot of work to be done before you get to that point. Like I said, I, I expect him to be ready to play this morning, and after one hole, he is. Yeah, perfect. Part 311th now, Scott, what's he looking at? Well, right to left down, pins on the front left. The play is basically five steps right and two steps past the, the whole location um, give yourself a little you know 15, 10 12 15 footer it's really going to be judging on how much the wind's going to make the ball go right to left and the wind just changed you know, it bounces around here at the 11th he had eight iron in his hand yeah Ned this is kind of at the end of the hill of Southern Hills kind of when you're going north and 
the wind, that, this is the, kind of the corner of the property. The wind really kind of, this is the only hole on the golf course where the wind kind of bounces around a little bit. Otherwise, you kind of know where it's coming from. I say it's the most difficult hole to judge the wind here in Southern Hills, to your point. Tee shot for Tiger. Solid. That's. He knows how to play here. Wood safely on the middle of the green. This should be enough, right? Yeah, I just want you to feel a little bit at your back here. At your back here, you know? I mean, as long as it's not hurting. It's not. Yeah. It's not wild about this right here. Close then, right? I think those are coming this way. This tree is just kind of small. I don't want to, it doesn't really matter what we feel right here. This is too much to It's got to be real. Got to be, right? It's all. I think it's just a stock one, right? Yeah. Yep. We're going to find that 11. Out. Yep. You feel, you feel it you're back there? talking things through with his caddy Michael Greller. Yeah, really the only bad miss is a little long left, so they know that. <laughs> Any wind, like the slightest. Just creeps on to the right front. Looks like it'll be repelled by that false front. They tried really, really hard to agree on a comfort shot, and obviously Jordan didn't buy in 100%. But he's okay. McElroy has been very deliberate this morning. He was in and out of the practice area, quickly into his shot there on the first. Same here, that one out to the right a bit. Trying to turn over. Just past pin high, middle of the green. McElroy and Woods with birdie putts ahead. Tiger, one hole down, one under. Currently in a tie for fourth, very early in this first round of the PGA Championship. Tiger Woods birdied the 10th hole, so off to a solid start. And, um, they all three have birdie putts. Ned, you have a good look at any of them? Yeah, there's pretty pretty good movement around this hole. Everything wants to go from the back right to the front left of this green. So Tigers is going to be a double breaker, working a little bit left at the end. And Jordan will have a severe break halfway to the hole, and then it will pick up speed. Yeah, once it gets headed down kind of towards the creek, Ned, you're down there, you can see it's amazing how these bunkers have their, the pins are cut close enough to the bunkers where the slopes off the bunkers have a real effect on the line of these putts, don't they? Absolutely. You know, and that was part of what Gil Hans and his team came in to do was reclaim some of these edges. Jordan can be aggressive with this. There's a little upslope past the cup. Good pace on Spies birdie effort. Yeah, that would have been asking a lot to make it from there, but just get your solid two putt. Um, he did. He maybe he may be gaining on the pace a little bit. I know that came up short, but that was a that was a little tougher speed read there. How many holes will it, it take you when you have this big of a change in green speed compared to what you normally see on the PGA Tour? It'll take you exactly as long as it takes for you to make one for more than like three or four feet. So if you if you can roll one in from 10 or 15, 20 feet, all of a sudden all that's gone. But if you keep leaving them short, you kind of struck you're like, you know, you start getting unsure. So these are three of the best in the world that have ever played. They'll figure it out. Woods looking for back to back birdies.
Really good run. Yeah, good effort there. Good speed. Par in the 11th. Tiger one under through two. George. George, I think. Little right to left breaker here, George. This is a putt he can get after. Roy McElroy's birdie try. On the line, just short. Yes, that was right in the heart. Just a little short. So Rory's two for two, leaving him just a little short. So he needs to get in there a little closer and knock one in, and then he'll every, his world will be right again. See the rise smile from McElroy. Oh, if I just had the speed right, that would have dropped. Speed the par as well. You know, the, the little ones is what Jordan's been struggling with with his putting. And I think with this speed, he's going to be able to be a little more aggressive with the, you know, the four or five footers. That's why I think he might putt a little bit better here than some of those little misses he's been having. So we'll see how it plays out. And is that just losing your focus with those little misses? Oh, I'd say yes. But then it's also... You know, the, the speed of the greens. I mean, everything kind of gnaws at you. But this speed is not going to be getaway speed. So you ought to be able to be aggressive, particularly on the, on the shorter ones. Our feature group number one here on ESPN Plus, Tiger Woods, Roy McElroy, Jordan Spieth. They began their day on the 10th. So this will be their third hole now. It's the par 4 12th. This was one of the holes that you had highlighted prior to the start of our, our broadcast here. I'm George Savarikas with Scott McPlank. Ned Michaels is following this group as we, we get our first look at the 12th this week, Scott. Right, and it's it's such an iconic hole. And, George, as you and I and Ned were talking about, Tiger's going with the Stinger 2-iron here, which I think is really the way to play the hole. You hit it out there somewhere around that bunker just to the right of it and leave yourself with a stock 8-iron maybe seven iron into the green. Some guys are hitting driver, but Tiger's playing it like he's always played it. There it is. It's amazing he can still hit that shot with all the physical, the back, the leg, you know, everything that he's been through. And he's still got that stinger, and it's a great shot. 20 plus years he's had that in his arsenal. All right, here we've got a different game plan right here. If Jordan can hit it in the fairway on the holes that he picks to hit driver like this, then he's going to be in good shape. So there's two ways to play. Either play it the way the hole was built or you try to cut a little off, and here he goes. Yank left for speed. Yeah, you didn't have to get. Oh, look at that. Did we see where it went up, ended up? We'll have eyes on that in just a second. I'll tell you what, there's a lot of things that could happen over there to the left. Most of them aren't good. Usually good things happen with Rory McElroy. Yeah, and he's going with the driver. Tiger Stinger, I watched this on repeat. 
for hours. Yeah, it's just, I mean, it's a, it's a go-to, it's his go-to shot. And that's the same way he's been hitting it for 25 years. And it's, it's been a shot that's helped define his career and it works. Hit a lot of those back in 07 when he won the PGA Championship here at Southern Hills. A couple past PGA champions. John Daly, why he starts so far for Tiger Woods. Feature group one here on ESPN Plus has hit every fairway, every green. One under through two. Getting ready to play his second shot to the par four 12th. Look at where the three tee shots wound up for this group of, you see Tiger Woods with the stinger. 273 off the tee. Jordan Spieth actually snuck through the left-hand tree. So he's in the fairway with 116 in. Rory McIlroy. 354, just 86 yards left into this par four. That is the one problem for Tiger, is if guys like Rory and Jordan hit driver on holes, he's hitting the stinger, and they hit it in the fairway. Odds are they're going to be better with a wedge than he is with a seven iron. But it's a long tournament, and there's a good chance that those Rory and Jordan, if they keep hitting driver there, are going to hit one bad drive and that could be bad. Tiger's not going to hit a bad stinger. So we'll say it's a, it's a great this is a great uh, contrast of how to play how to play the course how to play the game. He's already picked up noticeably in the last hour. Yeah, I think that's that's good. That's going to end up being the story of the day is how hard the wind blows and what it does to your club selection and shot shape. And it's not a consistent breeze, right, Scott? It comes and it goes, and that's what the problems arise for the players trying to gauge it, especially when you have to be so precise. Yeah, I agree. And I think as the day goes on, it'll pick up and be more consistent. Woods from the fairway on 12. What a good iron shot. Textbook right there. I mean, that's how he plays now, and it, I still think it's good enough to win. So does Tiger. Right, obviously. There's just already so much going into every shot. So the math, you know, each player comes out with a couple of clubs in their hand trying to figure out, well, is it a hard one of these or an easy one of those? As you know, Ned, yeah. that's what the wind will do to you. You better be on point with your golf swing yeah. today. And off the left for sure. Yeah. It will move the left right. I mean, that's where it's projected to be. That's what it's showing. I'd say it's more in than anything. This just a flighted gap wedge, trying to keep it under the breeze. approach from speed to the 12th. Yeah, he's got another little uphiller. This one's more in a makeable range, I think. This McElroy drive was outrageous. It looked like he was playing it down the 10th fairway. It started so far left. If he can do that, he might be. <laughs> he could be very dangerous. But this is where he struggled this year. Wedges when it's windy. Nice little cutoff follow through. In there. Close. No struggle on that one. That showed us something, gentlemen. 
No, I love that little dead handed follow through there, trying to keep it down and keep the spin off it. Checking out the replay for McElroy and how is this? Yeah, just a little three quarter, basically punch shot. Reduce the spin. You know, that's been, in my opinion, that's been his big problem is he puts so much spin on the ball with these short clubs that it's hard to control where it ends up. But that right there is a different brand of shot. McElroy to kick in range on the 12th will be his first birdie on the card. So here's where the routing gets a little interesting. You have that 13th tee. One of the boxes is actually to the left of the 12th green. The other tee that they can utilize for the par 5 13th to the right of it. But you got to wait for people to tee off before you can putt out. Yeah, you might need an air traffic control guy. They might need to put a tower up here and uh, have someone waving the shots back and forth because it's uh, the congestion could get a little bit. A little bit heavy. Not often you have a green directly in front of a teeing area. That's part of the renovation here to really stretch Southern Hills as much as they could. Yeah, they, and that's a great picture right there. You can see our group and then the group ahead of them <laughs> is in the same picture on the next hole. Twelfth that we're on one of two holes that didn't have an increase in yardage. Yeah, there's just there's no place to go. It's up against the corner of the property. It. I don't know if you could ever make it long enough, though, George. In all honesty. They added 425 yards, the 13th, which we'll see next with this new T 95 yard increase. That's why you have the unique scenario of a putting green <laughs> right in front of a D box. It is. You don't see this very often, but uh, it might be. It might start becoming the new thing. So one group off the tee, the other group working their balls in the green. Well, bonus coverage on ESPN Plus. Exactly. And two groups in one. We'll have some scenarios like that on the front as well. And when you have that stretch of two, three, six, and seven. Exactly. The approach shots. You see Rory McElroy inside two feet. Tiger Woods, 20 foot birdie putt. Jordan Spieth inside 10 feet. All solid shots. I mean, obviously, Tiger laid back, had more club in, but. He executed the shots that he that were in his game plan, so he's got he's got nothing to be worried about. He'll play his game, let the other guys play theirs. Two guys who decided to hit driver off the 12th tee inside 10 feet for birdie. Tiger laid back with the stinger, and it, like I mentioned, has a little more than 20 feet. And this one, you could sneak it in the high edge. It breaks from right to left the whole time, and then at the hole, it'll pick up speed. So, Scott, if you have a little extra gas as it's getting to the hole, it can wander away five or six feet. Well, and, and you're right, it's breaking right to left, and the wind's going to be blowing right to left down. Um, I don't think it's blowing quite hard enough yet to make a big difference, but you catch a gust, and it could add another foot or two to the length of the putt. Currently five players tied for the lead at two under par. Tiger with this for birdie and a share of the lead. Solid. That was, that was a really nice putt. Just overread it just a little, but that was a well struck putt. I think he hit it exactly where he was trying to. That's all you can ask for. Big putts for Spieth early in his round. 
I agree. It's, I mean, this is where you start gaining momentum. You knock one in like this. I mean, it's going to be, it's almost straight uphill, and it really shouldn't have a lot of break. Did you see anything there, Ned? Well, no, they're trying to find break. It's one of those putts. It, it wow. looks like you know, it wants to go left and then back right. It, it's dead straight with a little bit of pace. Right. So that sometimes that's the easiest putt in the world, and sometimes that's the hardest putt in the world. So this will be a good test right here. Pick his line, hit a nice, solid, firm putt, and get, you know, and knock one in the middle and get rolling. Birdie putt for Spieth. Gets that one to drop. Spieth now one under through three. Did you see the fist pump? You don't think that was important? Oh, I, listen, I feel a lot better about my pick now. <laughs> but to your point, he misses that and you start thinking, oh, no, I'm not making anything. You roll that in, okay. McElroy joins the party at one under par. They're making it look pretty easy so far. Mark it a four on the 12th for Tiger. All three guys in our featured group. One under through the first three holes. That's what we came for, isn't it? See some good golf. These, I think these guys are going to deliver. The way, at least so far, it's, they all look extremely solid. Yeah, they've all looked sharp at the outset. So Scott, I mentioned 95 yards added to the par 5 13th. The flyover, and you got to fly over the, the 12th green. So yeah, and then there's the old tee, which you can barely see. It's also a little uphill to get to the back of the old tee, so amazing par 5. Um, I think if you really, really bomb one, you can think about going for it in two because it does play downwind, but. AKA Rory. A AKA Rory. Um, but it's obviously, you can see there's trouble up here. That tree on the left sticks out a lot more than you think it does if you're going for it. So, I mean, if you just pulled a little bit and you clip that tree, you're gonna end up in one of those little uh, penalty areas and then you're gonna be an unhappy golfer. But. Um, Cool hole. You won't see that shot very often. Teeing off over the flag stick of the previous hole. What's the sight line like from back there? Well, it's you know it's it's a very it's a beautiful sight line because it's tree line. There's trees all down the left and a huge couple of huge trees on the right, so it gives you a real it gives you a really good picture. It's just 635 yards long. Ned, do you see anyone getting home in two today? I think Roy McIlroy can do it. You know, it. Look at his driver and he's carrying it. Harry Diamond told me 325. We've got at least Scott 15 yards of wind behind. If he can just catch the down slope with that big draw that he hits and I think he can get another 15 or 20 when it lands. Yeah I do think he can get home. Yeah I agree. If he if he flies at 325 and, and catches any part of the that's about where the hill starts catches any part of that then he can definitely get home now whether he, whether or not he wants to go for it that's another thing but there's a few guys that could probably get there which is amazing now, Jordan's picked up some yardage with this new driver that he's put in play over the past couple of weeks and earlier in the week on the practice range you know, Greller was asking him to hit a draw and then a fade and low and high and he had a you know, little pep in his step so he might be able to turn one over Catch the wind. You never know. Yeah, you never know. Yeah. Have a lot of moments like this and something else. Yeah, I think it's there's going to be a lot of waiting because you have so many, like you said, congestion areas of tees and greens that are very close and cross each other. So this is kind of a total. This is a new, new phenomenon. In major championship golf, and I'm 
it may continue in, in talking with players in the field and, and only a handful were part of the 07 PGA what do you think the reception's been to the, the changes that they've made oh I think they're I mean other than the stuff like this which is really only affects the tournament with the tee plate you know with these new back tees but I think in general they, they love it the golf course is in great shape uh, Russ Myers did a phenomenal job over the last couple of years really getting this place ready to go um, the greens are perfect they're slopey the fairways are lush there's just enough rough to make it jumpy so um, I think guys are I think guys are fired up about it. Gil Hans saying you could spend a lifetime on this property and not figure out a better routing than the original one that Perry Maxwell had, had laid out. Yeah, th this is one of those places where I think you just got here and the holes were just there. You know, just you start at the top of the hill and you can look out and the holes are just there. Spieth after birdie on the 12th. Right down the middle, that's a good start. That should be liftoff time for Roy McIlroy. I just buckled in. I mean, big gust of wind now at his back. Let it eat, Rory. Up the right hand side. Didn't sound like he quite caught it there, Scott. Yeah, I think it's going to stay in. It did stay in the fairway. Yeah, he's he's only a couple steps past Jordan, so it wasn't like the last hole where he bombed at 350. First driver we're seeing out of Tiger Woods. Does he have in his back? He's got a lot of pop. Tiger chasing down the left hand side of the fairway. First time we're taking a look at this, the leaderboard. See the big group of players at two under par. All three guys in our featured group in eight. I'm just trying to get the structure of my swing closer to the DNA of how I used to swing it when I was younger, you know, college into the first few years on tour and still trying to reverse, you know, some years of bad swings. Oh my goodness gracious. Just hit the green and be okay with hitting it on the green. For me, a rehearsal really helps me feel like I get my tempo dialed in and then it feels like you know, I do a better job of setting the club the way I want to, and it's still a work in progress. Ideally, I don't want to have to you know, do a rehearsal each time, but I swing it better when I do it. So I'll continue to do so until I, you know, start hitting positions I want to time and time again. It's become a familiar sight now for Jordan Spieth, but we're starting to see the results from him for the last month or so for more. Let's bring in Ryan Rohde on what exactly Jordan's trying to simulate. Yeah, thanks guys. I had the chance to walk a few holes with Jordan yesterday afternoon and I talked with his coach Cameron McCormick and they said really what he's trying to do is get the club to feel like that and the backswing his wrist set late and then obviously the club's going to start to shallow and that gets it in front of him and that's a feel that they've worked on to try to get his feels when he was really striking it from 2014 to 2016 when he had the club in front of him and he could start that ball on the line that he wanted to. So they said it's not perfect right now, but that feels really starting to work and he and he likes the w where it is. All right, thank you, Ryan. 
It's like an exaggerated Mike Weir move that we used to see. Well, it, it is, and, and in those terms, <clears throat> when you're a player, you sometimes have to exaggerate what you want to happen. Now you don't want to you don't want to get too far, but it's obvious that he's worried about or, or working from keeping the club getting stuck behind him and getting the club getting his hands out where they pass in front of his chest at impact instead of being trying to play catch up. So it's it looks to me like it's working. He's hitting the ball solid and, and maybe straighter than he's hit it in a while off the tee. So that's positive results. Space ball striking numbers top 30 and strokes gained off the tee top 20 and strokes gained approach. So been well if he's great. top 30 in, st in strokes gained off the tee you know it, when he was at his prime he was the best iron player. I mean at his prime he's still in his prime but if he gets back to that be good stuff. Tiger just laying up. Down the left side big bounce. Yeah, he should be okay. That tree, those branches might just stretch out, make him hit a shot. The other tree on the left side, and that really kind of hangs over. So <clears throat> there's a very, it's a much tighter layup than it appears to be. Next up is Spieth. Next up is no. Next up is Jordan. Uh, well, it, yeah, it looks like they're virtually the same. R Rory's two yards back, so he's going to go ahead and play, and um, roughly 190-ish yards to cover the front edge. Wind behind and out of the left. And on an absolute launching pad here, Scott, he's got a beautiful lie. Yeah. You know, the drive didn't take much of a big bounce at all, but it's ended up in a position where he can hit any shot that he wants. Yeah, and you certainly get on, bring it in high. Right, you get on that right side and those little, he's right at the, almost at the very crest of that first big hill, and that it is like a launching pad right there. So this is like hitting a range ball right here off a perfect lie and just let her rip. But so what has he got, 257 to the hole then? I agree. That's what we're trying to do. Okay. Launching. Yep. Yep. Down to your left. Two fifty-three. Yeah. Hey, Roy. Yep. Virtually the same yardage. Now this club carries two fifty in the air. A little bit of breeze behind him and off the left. So this should carry. Virtually all the way to the center of the green if he catches it. Spieth trying to get home at two. Just came a little bit out of the heel of the club. You could hear the contact and it was spinning yeah. early. And McElroy right to the plate here. Rory wasted no time. Yeah, he'll hoist this straight up in the air, use the wind. This one heading right also. Similar spot to speed. So technically, We'll say they had 255 to the hole. Does that mean their drives went 380? <laughs> if, uh, if you go off the yardage on the scorecard, um, that's something, isn't it? Yeah, Jordan's went 373. Wow. Uh, Rory's tee shot went 378. 75.9. 74 total. 79 top. 84 total. Mostly helping him. What's up there? Maybe a little off the left? Yeah, just a touch. Yeah, you go. The pin just nine on, four off the right. Tiger with 85 yards left for his third. 
this nice little kind of I would expect some sort of little kind of shut down you know hold off L wedge here should yeah, have a chance tree. to hit it just left of the flag pretty close. for Woods. Just a mistake you can't make to that pin. Yeah that's that's a little surprising that the, the ball flew that far actually I, mean, I know he was trying to dial in an 85 yard shot but something something crossed up there. Now he's now he's actually not in a very good spot. Above the hole coming out of the sand, which does not spin great. So, so will take some touch, which he has. So, you know, Scott, though, these bunkers that they're the old school sand, right? Like kind of river bottom sand. So they've, they've got some grit and grain to them, and they're very difficult to spin. So he's going to have to figure out a way just to plunk it on the green and then have it wander down to the cup. No, I agree. This this is kind of old school, you know, in tune with the old school renovation. Uh, the bunkers are not like this pristine sand where you can do anything you want out of it. This bunk, these bunkers are a little bit of a hazard with this sand. Tactically, how does that change things? Well, like yeah, Tiger's more. coming downhill, he cannot spin it as to, as Ned said. So. Um, you're going to play it more like kind of little chip and run shots out of the bunker instead of these, you know, big swings with lots of loft and, and a lot of spin. Just that's that shot's not particularly in play this week. And you know, Scott, sometimes when you get this sand that has that firm base to it, guys who are steep out of the bunkers can almost drop kick into the ball. And Jordan gets steep sometimes on these so this will be a good test for him. Yeah this is uh, he's on a flat lie looks like Rory's a little up slope so that'll help but yeah this will just be he's going for height and soft not spin. Let's see how he does here. Yeah. That's not a terrible shot there Ned but that you just can't spin it. That's right. And, and in a way that you know makes Tiger's shot long of the green a little bit easier because he can use the slope of the green. He can use gravity and just kind of run the ball to the cup. Yeah as long as he has enough green to you know to play with then yes you can just let it trickle out. Woods is fourth. And the magician. Very good. He actually got a little bit of spin on that then. I think he carried it farther than I thought he was going to. I agree. Now, if you're Rory, you're thinking about making this one. He's a little on the upslope. A little on the upslope. All he has to do is really get it out, and it'll work to the cup. Yeah, this is a this is a chance. I think the upslope, Ned, from those two shots, if you're on the upslope, you might be able to get a little bit of spin on it. But if you're most of the balls in the bunkers end up in the flat in the bottom, and that's where guys are going to have been struggling and are going to struggle. Yeah, and it helped that Rory was hitting back into the upslope of the green as well, so that gave it a little extra check. Well played, without a doubt. Rory looking pretty locked in early. The lead has shifted now to three under par with Max Homo, who's a two top winner this season on the PGA Tour, and Will Zalatoris. Homo birdieing 12, 13, and 14. Now this one is a stroke tester because it's quick and it moves from left to right. If you come up early out of it, you know, Scott, you're going to 
flinch it off to the right. So you absolutely have to make a proper stroke. Yes, there's no doubt. The, the wind's not blowing hard enough to influence putting yet, is it? Not yet, no. Okay, well, this is a makeable putt, though. Spieth for back-to-back -back birdies. Looks like he hit a nice putt. Um, just may got a, we just got barely away to the right. Only two par fives at Southern Hills. You want to try and take advantage of them, but it's a par on the 13th for Jordan Spieth. Jordan always very uh, expressive or chatty when breaking down what just transpired. He would be a great guy to have a mic on because he's not going to really say anything bad, but he's going to talk a lot. Oh, it's not stop. Will it be a sand save for Woods? And Woods bogey on the 13th. Well, so he and Jordan are walking off the green with a little different mindset. Jordan's kind of lamenting that he didn't get up and down and didn't make birdie, and Tiger's already got past all that because he only hit the one bad shot. But he saved himself, so everything's everything's cool in his world. Yeah, no harm, no foul. Roy McIlroy, second straight birdie. Taking advantage of those enormous drives in the fairway. This is the fast start we've been hoping to see from Roy McElroy. And all three of these guys in our feature group number one under par through four holes. Well, that's the reason they're in feature group number one, right? These guys can play. George Savarikas with Scott Replank and Ned Michaels. So from the long par 5 13th, we're going to make our way to the next par 3 here on property. And this is an absolute beast of a par 3. Nice aerial here as you see it at the perimeter of Southern Hills Country Club. One birdie coming from the co-leader, like I mentioned, Max Homa. Well, a two on this hole is picking up, picking up almost a full shot on the field. Maybe he is picking up a full shot. This is a. I guess you're pretty content with a three on this hole. Yeah, that's a great hole to make a three on. I mean, he's 221 yards today, and the pin's up front a little bit. So, you know, four or five iron for these guys, but they got to have to mess with the wind blowing it towards the out of bounds. So. It's a formidable hole. A little snack for Tiger Woods. You see Rory and Jordan chatting it up. Now, is it going to be just a lot of Rory and Jordan making small talk while Tiger has his normal uh, Tiger stare going, or all three of these guys been uh, commiserating with some of these breaks? You know, the Tiger will wade in every now and again, but it's quick. And it's effective, and then he kind of gets back into his own bubble. Just went into Jordan Spieth's back. Tiger checking out Jordan's sticks. Well, Tiger is a tremendous student of the game, and I know he tinkers with clubs and 
loves every you know to see what someone's doing and he, he I know he, he works on little things that most people wouldn't work on in chip shots and wedge shots because he's trying to find a better way to do it even at this point. A different version of Tiger Woods is it for Rory and Jordan to play with compared to the guy you played with 15 years ago? Oh, I think it's a much, much different version. You know, he's like I mean, he's he's always he's always been great to play with, but he's more affable now. He's more open. Um, you know, and now he's an elder statesman, talking with the younger guys. Um, he's doing what he should be doing. Um, and he's he, like I said, he's always been great to play with. So this is a treat for all three of them. What was he like? Uh, I mean, you played on what four different teams with Tiger? Yeah, he was great. I mean, he's he's great. You know, I mean, he's, like I said, he's a good he's good to play with because he he acts the right way and he knows how to get his way around the golf course with you know in a respectful manner. But no, he's a great teammate. Loves to play ping pong. Um, you know, likes funny jokes and pranks and stuff just like you know everybody on those teams so uh, he fit in very well as a teammate but he was Tiger Woods so there was always more demand of him and his time than everybody else so it's just that's the world he lives in do you think it was hard for Tiger 15 20 years ago to go from this alpha competitor who was just dominating as a long time world number one to then in the, in the team dynamic to let his guard down which you get to see much more frequently now with the younger generation yes I think I mean that he was he's built to win major championships and do it in his way and be in his world and yeah it's a different deal and I fully understand it um, it's hard to let somebody else in your kitchen when your kitchen's awesome <laughs> you know and it's not it has nothing to do with personality or desires is just this is the world I live in and it's hard to bring somebody else into it obviously he's changed now he's like I said he's a lot more uh, outgoing and friendly with the with the guys and, and the guys all look up to him and respect him all right so the 2022 Masters last month, Tiger's first official event since the November 2020 Masters. Tiger, like we mentioned, won the 07 PGA at Southern Hills, was in with a second round 63. Absolutely electric performance that Friday. Four time PGA champion, 99, 2000, 2006, and 2007. The amazing thing with with Tiger Woods, I mean, he's won the career Grand Slam a few times over. But if you remember from 97 to 2000, his first four majors, he wins the 97 Masters by 12, then the 99 PGA at Medina clips Sergio Garcia by one, the 2000 U.S. Open by 15, and then the Open later that summer in 2000 by eight. So three of his first four major victories were by eight, 12, and 15 to capture the career grand slam at the age of what 25 24 yeah and I think that's probably I mean it's just my opinion but my opinion is that's probably the best golf that's ever been played you know he's the greatest of all time I don't know I mean Jack Nicholas has won more but I'd say they're co-favorites and co but I think he's played better than anybody's ever played before so um, that's pretty that's a pretty high bar and yeah and that Unfortunately, I was on the wrong end of all those uh, rear end whippings. <laughs> um, but it was pretty cool to see a guy could lap the field like that. It was pretty amazing. What stood out to you the most of the 07 PGA Championship from what Tiger did after opening with an over par over par round on Thursday that final 54 holes? Oh, he just just total command of his game. I mean, just 
fairways, greens, making putts. Which is what we've seen out of Roy McIlroy early in this first round. Headed out to the right. Did it draw back? Sure did. Beautiful shot right there. Played the win. Drew it in there just about 15, 20 feet above the hole. You heard him say hard draw. You don't want to overcook it here. Left of this flag, there's only four paces before you get into the bunker, and it's no easy up and down. All right, I think they were talking about the one short it was not that bad. But if you're past it's the hole, Trump you're trying to come. Beautiful. Speed slinging it in there on the 14th. Guys are putting on a stripe show so far. Well, Scott, they're doing exactly what you prescribed, right? Taking advantage of these few holes when the wind isn't as strong, maybe, as it's going to get. Oh, yeah, I think everybody that's playing this morning is, is I mean, you know, you can call it a good break, but they're playing at the right time to get it. Go ahead and get a score. It's two headed out to the right, trying to come back. Lovely. Great shot. Even better. Tiger Woods, best of the bunch. Just inside the tee ball of Jordan Spieth. All three on the 14th green. Welcome back to ESPN Plus. George Savarikis with Scott Verplank and Ned Michaels looking at the tee shot from Tiger Woods in the par 3 14th. Just an amazing golf swing is what it is. It's amazing that he's had the physical problems and he can still swing it like that. Are you surprised how closely the swing, the swing resembles from what we saw in 2018 and 19 after the car accident with this comeback for Tiger? Well, I, I mean, I would say yes, but then I would say no also because it is Tiger Woods, and if anybody could do it, he could do it. But, you know, he does obviously doesn't have the same, quite the same stability in his right leg that he had before. I mean, it doesn't mean he can't get it, but um, he is not putting enough pressure on it with his golf swing. It's just the walking that's difficult, but he's swinging so good at it that I bet he's, he's doing a wonderful job of not stressing that leg too much during the shot. So... I'm sure that's high on his list of things to do. McElroy birdied the 12th, birdied the 13th. This would make it three in a row and a share of the lead. You got a beat on this nut? Should wander left here and at the hole, maybe kick back to the right a little bit. McElroy pours it in. He's off to a good start if he's going to break his Thursday woes in major championships. This putt looked good from the get-go, didn't it? McElroy looking like Sunday Rory. Ball never wavered. Looked like it was on a string the whole time. Just 
the second birdie of the day on the part three fourteenth. Well, you couldn't ask for a better place from where to putt than Jordan and Tiger. They're right in the saddle of this green. And Jordan's as it loses speed might fall a little bit left, but exceptionally straight overall. It's the one you feel like you need to make, Scott. Yeah, he should put a good putt stroke on it. Give it a good firm shot. Another edge for Spieth. Uh, I think that didn't do exactly what he was reading. I don't think he hit a terrible putt. It just didn't react how he wanted. So Tiger Woods had to have a good look at this. He would have definitely been an interested onlooker. I just don't have much in this. Another one of those, huh? Is yeah, it's just the pace. If you want to die it, you might get it to work a little bit. But it's really just a, one of those that you've practiced a billion times on the putting green. And that's what you want to have in your head right now, that you've made this a billion times on the putting green. Woods for birdie. Yeah. Tiger to two under. Pretty damn good, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, that obviously, you know, he's putting great, but he's he's hit the ball very. I mean, he hit the one kind of wayward wedge on the previous hole, but I mean, he's hitting the ball wonderful. Putter looks good also. Everything looks good. His energy's up. Looks looks pretty healthy and fit right now doesn't he. Yeah, he certainly does you would hope his energy would be up for round number one. I think the big test will be tomorrow afternoon when the temperatures are in the low 90s. Well I think his energy will, his attitude and energy will be good. Uh, just be like yesterday I was a little bit nervous yesterday because he looked a little tired to me but uh, but I. Uh, you know, maybe he was, you know, there's another practice round at another major. He's done it a gazillion times. Sometimes your energy's not as high. Um, but he's ready to go today, along with this man. There's some fresh metal for McElroy off the tee. And Scott, you nailed it. He has been so decisive in what he's doing today. Very much planned. Well, Quick into the shot. That's a good one down the right side. Drawing a little bit. Perfect. Another fairway hit from McElroy. Yeah, listen, Rory and Tiger are both playing right to their game plan right now. They're, you know, they're different game plans, but they're both executing right to how they feel they can win this golf tournament. So I like that out of Rory because we don't always see that, but he does look very decisive. Stinger time for Tiger, which is perfect. It's just this is this hole's ideal for this. And he's going to get it in the fairway. This one just skirting the right side. And we'll get caught up in the rough. Well, it's the first one that didn't look beautiful. This three wood for Jordan carries two seven five. Started down the center. Just chases through the fairway for speed. Yeah, that, and that's a good example, or that's a good picture right there. There's no first cut of rough. 
So that just kind of hops right off the fairway level, right into the thicker stuff. Flyover of the 15th. Yeah, wonderful. It's one of the shorter holes on the golf course. Yeah. Um, the spunker down a little dog leg left, the spunker down the left is about 275 from the tee, so that's why guys are hitting less than driver because the fairway really na narrows up and slopes off into the right rough. And then you have a short to mid iron into a green that is severely, severely sloped. Yeah, Gil Hans saying this is one of the more under the radar green complexes at Southern Hills. Oh my gosh, it's they have the pin on the front left, which is one of the few flat places, but everything around it's not flat. It goes off in all directions, and then the whole back half of the green is just is just diabolical. Yeah. Gil saying the 15th, one of his favorite holes here at Southern Hills. The last three holes. hiccups and, and around the greens is what and then it leaks back into hitting a bad tee shot but if he putts good he is more than a force to be reckoned with yeah statistically this season has been putting well top 40 in strokes gain putting so all the numbers say that his game is where it needs to be to contend in majors it just seems like Historically, there's there's been a mental block with these slow starts, but today completely different narrative for Rory McIlroy, who already has a share of the lead. Yeah, I'm sure he's been thinking about that every single day since the last major, and he finished so strong at the Masters. Maybe it maybe that helped turn his attitude around and say, "Hey, I need to just just be me." The first round. Well, this is going to be the first test. For Tiger's leg, he's got to push off hard here with his second. The ball sitting down and the grain kind of growing back into him. The breeze also working into Tiger and off the right. Yeah, so he's got to be counting on a huge jumper if he can get solid contact against the grain and then play and hope it'll bounce up onto the right front of the green. Yeah, it looked like to me it was one of those ones that was going to come off low though with no spin. And land it short and short and left would be acceptable here. Well, if it got into the bunker, if it got into the front half of the bunker, he's got a you know reasonable chance there. Woods will be testing the short game once again. The sand save on the 13th. We'll see if uh, he's facing another bunker shot here on the 15th. This should be another green light for Rory right here. Play it just. Three or three, four steps right of the flag, and a step or two past it, and let the green just feed it towards the hole. You said it all when you said it. But how's the wind out there, Ned? Is it starting to pick up a little bit? It's just where it's been since about the 12th, just kind of gusting around. But now the danger here is that he gets one up in the air, and the wind does hit it. It's only five paces on. But again, there's a lot of room long and right, and he can use the backboard. A buck 33 all the way to the hole. Mac 
McElroy, the colleague. That's got to go. Oh. How about that bounce? Skips on up there, and Rory yeah, that is a with the birdie putt. That is a good bounce to get up that. I mean, if it checks at all, it's going to roll back down, you know, three or four steps off the green. Now, this one for Jordan may be that heater that you were talking about. Scott, it's kind of sitting down, but there's a little air under it. So it is that one that can come off with no spin, knife through the wind, and carry itself to the center of the green. Is that tree on the corner there? Is it in his way? No, just visually. It's not really in play. He felt like he was a little handcuffed there because he I think he knew he was going to hit it in the bunker right there. Well, I think he was worried about catching that flyer. Right. And right. on the angle he was long and left is is really bad because it's, it's so fast. It is so the lesser of two evils. Yeah. So he's playing the angle here trying to keep it below the hole. Even if it's in the bunker at least you're going back against the wind uphill. So the major drought stretching all the way back to the 2014 PGA Championship. This is pretty amazing when you think of just how talented Roy McIlroy is. He has not led or co-led after a major round since that win at Valhalla. That is amazing because I mean you watch him he's like the he's like what would you do different if you wanted a golfer if you wanted to build a golfer what would you do different than what he does. He's with the other group. Um, well, and we've seen him in the final group with Patrick Reed at the Masters four right. years ago, but it just hasn't been in the driver's seat, not just into the weekend, any round. I know it's a golf is a is a very it's a very mentally distracting game and you have to have your at this level. You have to have your head right for every shot, even at the talent he has. Roy nine feet for the outright lead. Spieth and Woods both found that bunker. Yeah, we'll have to. Ned, are you down there? Jordan's more in the flat, isn't he? Yeah, the ball that's on the upslope is very manageable. That's but Jordan in the flat, which is going to have to use the backstop. He can throw it a good 20 feet past the hole, and it's fast enough. I watched players in the practice round; they can use that slope. Yeah, he doesn't. Does he have enough room to just play a conventional shot? He can. Yeah, he absolutely can. I just can. don't know if he can spin it. He's trying. It's pretty good. The wind was his biggest help right there. He was back into it. So Tiger's barely on the upslope here, Ned. Yeah, this is one that you know, not all that dissimilar from the one that Rory had back on 13. You just splash it out. Well, that one jumped out of there, didn't it? Well, you know, he caught too much ball, we were saying, maybe back on 13, and that was similar. Hmm. Yeah, these, the guys have been struggling with the sand. Um, you know because it is old school sand and it's a little different so you, you don't always have a tremendous feel for how it's going to come out so it's part of the equation see the contact with this bunker shot yeah I think it Ned called it perfect it just a little, just a fraction too much ball and not enough sand so it came out a little bit hot Tiger will be away. Will likely drop a shot here on the 15th. Yeah, this is a difficult read on this to this pin right here. The left the left of the hole goes towards the hole and the right of the right of the hole goes towards the hole for a minute and then it goes away from the hole 
And the ball, it's just, it's one of those ones that's going to be so difficult to get the right line. The Tiger has 20 feet for par here on the 15th green. It just depends on how hard he hits it. Scott, I mean, he, you nailed the break. It's so slippery down to this cup that you could hit it soft and sling it out. to avoid his first bogey. And has that left for five. Yeah, I mean, it's it's an awkward hole position because of the slope coming off the bunker. Offsets kind of the whole rest of the green. So you just, you can't get the right, uh, you could see Tiger, he kind of looked at it from two different spots on either side of the ball, just trying to get a visual on what he really thought it was going to do. It's, it's, a, it's a tough, it's, it's an awkward looking hole position. McElroy now from nine feet for birdie in the outright lead. Shouldn't be a lot on this, is there, Ned? No, this is green light. Yeah. Rory McElroy now four under. That's his fourth consecutive birdie. A blistering start from the four-time major champion. Is the hex broken? We're getting closer, aren't we? <laughs> it was until you asked that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, not one of those. <laughs> it's been a great six holes. Yes. Yeah, well, we, we need to get him through a few more holes. Yeah, what a spectacular start, though. This one should, for Jordan, just bleed in that high edge it's going to break from his heels to his toes and it should not have a lot of speed when it gets to the cup can speed scratch out a par i was looking right down the line he pushed it that never had a chance yeah, it's like I, I it, like i said it, it's a very awkward i don't know what they're seeing but from my experience, it's a very awkward look at that location because you have contrasting hills and forces that don't make sense. Jordan and Tiger both bogey the 15th. Woods one under through six. Spieth even on his round. Roy McElroy leaving both these guys in our feature group number one here on ESPN Plus in his rearview mirror through the first six holes. Tiger with birdies on 10 and 14 and that bogey on 15. How to take a chance with your tee shot if you want to attack this hole. Correct. 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 Oh. Wow. That miss carrying that bunker by a yard at most. 
yard or two, and that probably would have chased out 20, 30 yards beyond that. It was only 330 to carry that bunker. It's the first miss fairway for the leader, Roy McElroy. Good news for Roy is that ball looked like it rolled back pretty far from the lip. So get down and away from that lip, he'll be able to get up over it and presumably get it up somewhere around the green. See these massive galleries following this group. To see this man, Tiger Woods. Out, yeah, that kind of, I mean, that, that shows you how far Rory is hitting it. Finishing, uh, Tiger's certainly not right short. Yep. Mainly off the right, a little help off the left. Yes, sorry. Sit, 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 16th bunker. Here's the replay one more time. You really got to look. It's a yard and a half from Kerry. Which, like I said, is about 330 plus. Left to right, a little bit of help. That is beaten on it right there. Unfortunate that it ended up in the bunker. Welcome back to the first round of the PGA Championship here at Southern Hills Country Club in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Fifth time Southern Hills playing host to the PGA Championship. That's the most of any venue all time. Tiger Woods won the most recent edition of the PGA Championship here in Tulsa. That was back in 2007, a two shot victory. Woods off to a pretty solid start. In the fairway on the 16th, one under through six, but just bogeyed the previous hole, as did Jordan Spieth. All right, McElroy, who's the solo leader right now, flew it 340, but needed 342 in the tank. Or needed to push it two yards, but yeah, it, it did roll back. I think he'll, you know, he's probably got a six or seven iron and get it up over that lip and at least get it to the front edge, so. And you know, Rory, there's no telling what he might be able to pull 321, off. 321, I'd love some help, but I feel straight off the left, which would be west, southwest, or south, southwest. It's not supposed to be there, is it? No, it's supposed to be south, which is quartering. What do you think here? I mean, I'd play a little bit of help. You would? Just what they're doing off the left, too. I think it's a nice draw. You think it's a little shorter earlier? Just where this wind is. It's supposed to be quartering down. It's supposed to be quartering down. Two, two oh eight. Yeah, it's just if it's south of the other one. No, oh, it's gone. Uh, it's right in between. I think it's like that good strike you had a couple holes ago. Just wait till you feel a little, you know. Yeah. That's a fine job of Caddy by Michael Greller. Because the wind definitely is pushing left, but occasionally you get a gust from behind. And you cannot afford to be long here. That back bunker is a tricky up and down. He's protecting Jordan, making sure that if anything, he's coming up short. I think that's a good point, Ned. You can 
generally always play here from short, but boy, yeah, Long gets absolutely drilled. Wow! That's... I thought it was a pretty good shot when I hit it. It's going to be a dicey third. Yeah, that was not a good spot. Short sided, and then he trickled into the rough. You know, there's got to be a little bit more breeze up there when they're counting for because think about the second shots that both Jordan and Rory hit over on 13 earlier and they were pushed around by the breeze off to the right. You know, Oklahoma is known for its wind Ned, and uh, it doesn't go lightly. Tiger for 213 out. This out to the left. There you go. Another solid swim, uh, and I think he's doing what he needs to do. Oh, hi. Rory with four straight birdies, tying the longest birdie streak of his major career. That does he have to contend with the lip? He does, but this is a seven iron, and nobody in the game hits it higher, more comfortably than Rory. So, solid strike, and the lip is not a problem. Towering and right at it. Comes up a bit short. Yeah, I was kind of, I was thinking, you know, six or seven iron, he could probably get over the lip. Didn't know if that'd be enough, but he left himself in a really good spot. I mean, everything is basically in his favor now. Uphill, not a lot of break to it. Pretty simple pitch. How important is it here at Southern Hills to have your misses error on the side of being short versus long? Oh, uh, as, as, Almost every single hole over the green, most of the green slope back to front pretty severely. So over the green, you start bringing all kinds of things into play on, on about 16 of the 18 holes. But kind of like I said in the open, you need you got to play the angles around here because of the green complexes. Similar to Augusta, you've got to be on the right side of the hole if you miss the green. We've seen Tiger Woods uh, on. 15 and 12 use the stinger but give up a lot of distance off the tee. You think that's a game plan that he's going to stick to for the entirety of the week here. I think so until he gets to Sunday if he needs if he gets to Sunday and he's in contention and he feels like he needs to push it down there a little bit further. You know it'll be up to him and he's the best judge of that. Um, but no, I mean his game plan is perfect right now. I mean it's the way it's what he's won with for his career and there's no reason to change it. You know, I and mean, then we've only played they've only played six holes, so he's he's in great shape. And he's he had the one he hit the bad stinger on 15, got him in the rough, got him in trouble, and he had kind of a poor bunker shot. But other than that, it's been pretty flawless. Woods with two birdies on the card, one bogey at one under right now in a tie for tenth. I know you I mean you've lived it Scott we've all seen it but it was still pretty amazing walking around during the practice round yesterday and just seeing the size of the gallery following Tiger Woods it kind of resembles what we're seeing today and then I, I was hanging around after and was with like Seamus power on the third and we could see Tiger going up the ninth and even he took a step back to kind of take in the sights I mean it's just it, it's spectacular it is spectacular it's amazing and and it's like that everywhere. I mean, I was, you know, I think the Tulsa golf fans are great and they're going to show up when you have this tournament at Southern Hills. But I mean, that happens everywhere that Tiger plays, particularly now, because he's only going to play a few times a year. That degree of difficulty for this third shot for Jordan Speed. It is a solid nine. Wow. Yeah, the, the, the ball is sitting in a little bird's nest of Bermuda grass. It does have some space under the ball that he can create loft with. And the breeze might help him land it softly, but to get it close is going to require some serious touch from this man. Yeah, it's just hard to control this. The, it's hard to control the spin out of this kind of rough. So you're it's a little bit of a guessing game. This 
Spieth going up top. Scott, I don't know how you could have done it any better. I was just going to say that. I think that's obviously you could get a little luckier, but I mean, that's about what he had to do. And that was a good shot. Yeah, McElroy's just working from right to left and again, very decisive in what he's doing. Yeah, he left himself in the perfect spot, just short pitching. Just that was just a textbook, regular old chip and green chip right there. Do you remember Rory playing at this type of pace? It seems like he commits to a shot right after. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think he that may be what he's doing to get out of what well, you know we all you know have said it was major malaise is yep. first round well he's just said I'm just going to be decisive and play like I play every day at home. It's kind of what he looks like isn't it. Yeah absolutely and, and it began at the beginning of the day when he walked on to the putting green and then crossed over to the practice range everything has been very deliberate very decisive as if you know he had a plan in his mind on how the day was going to unfold and he's sticking to it. Well and I would say that's tremendous advice that he's either got he's either gotten given to him or he's come up with on his own because that obviously it's working today but man of his talent that is the recipe for success. That's what this guy's done for about 25 years. Woods from 21 feet out for birdie. Nice putt, just overread it just a hair, but that's another, that's a solid, that's another solid golf shot in Tiger Woods' book. See the red in the gallery. Tiger, of course, saving that for Sunday. Yeah, but people wear it every day if they're coming out to watch Tiger. It's a big putt for Jordan here. He needs to read one right and knock it in. He should have gleaned a little information from Tiger's putt, at least on the speed. Yeah, boy. He kind of looks the opposite of Rory. He looks kind of indecisive and a little bit jittery where Rory looks like he's just running on, you know, jet fuel. Yeah, Rory looks dangerous so far. for the second straight bogey for Jordan Spieth. Now a one over on his round. The par putt that he missed. It's been having trouble with these left to right putts just getting the line high enough. Yeah, that's that's not uncommon, you know, for a right hander. But boy, he was in and out of that one pretty fast and it was probably a combination of a misread and an indecisive stroke. McElroy for par. <laughs> Burry Street comes to an end. Rory still in the lead at four under par. Couldn't ask for a better start if you're Roy McIlroy. Putter looks good. The first fairway and green that he misses gets up and down, pitches it in there close within a few feet. 
Yeah, he's got to be, obviously, he's feeling good. I mean, you can just, his body language, the way he's being, like Ned said, being decisive, uh, just no, no doubt. He's just playing. So this could be a hole, depending on wind direction, how aggressive Rory is feeling. Yeah, this hole, I mean, this is a very interesting hole. Um, they can move the tee up here and make it drivable. I would think maybe Saturday. Yeah, I get to see that. They can do that. Today it's going to be back. The wind's blowing back in your face a little bit. And you're probably going to lay up, but you need to be in the left half of the fairway. Uh, the right half of the fairway starts falling away into the creek, but you also kind of get a downhill side hill lie to a very shallow green. So you'd like to keep it up kind of the left center of the fairway, which is pretty hard to do. I mean, it takes a, a quality tee ball to keep it on the on the top level where you have a kind of a flat shot or a, or a level shot. So the yardage today, 366 yards, yet it's playing as the third most difficult. Part of that, to your point, if you lay too far back off the tee, you have a very uncomfortable second shot with a downhill side hill eye. If you push it towards the penalty area, it's flatter, but then you bring trouble into play. Yeah, and, and then there's about a 10-yard area up the left half of the fairway that you need to hit it in. And, and off to the left is the thick rough, and to the right, you catch the side of the hill and roll down there, you know, onto a side hill, downhill lie. So, and the green is so shallow. I mean, it's literally one hop right over the green, and then you're like, oops. <laughs> so Rory's staying aggressive. He's It looks like he's got a three-wood out. Ned, is that? That looked like the one. Scott, tell me you didn't think like that when you played. My gosh, you made this hole sound next to impossible. Well, no, it's, <laughs> no, I didn't know, but I, you have to, you do, you do all that thinking on Monday and Tuesday, and then you, you, do, you try to get to where Rory is now and you already have it figured out and you walk up on this tee and say, okay, I know my target. I know the club. Let's hit it. <laughs> the 14th tee pretty close to the 17th tee, so Rory just waiting for that group to get off. Here's the leader. The wind really starting to whistle back into his face now. Uh, he's hoping it'll stay there. That is ideal. See, Ned, it was pretty easy, wasn't it? Well, that's what you said to do, right? Just hit it down the left side in the flat, and then you can attack. Perfect. Easy game. Yeah, easy game. He's making it look that way. But yeah, that is, that's the ideal spot. He's got a level shot with a wedge to now what it becomes a gettable hole location. Iron in hand for Tiger Woods. better pass at it there with the stinger. Boy, all the speed was in the right place on that one, wasn't it? Yep, and he hit it perfectly up the left side. It's an important swing, Scott, for Jordan Spieth right here. I know, my, my pick is, is uh, falling apart on me here. Let's get going, Jordan. <laughs> But it is an important swing. He needs to hit this ball in a position where he could be aggressive with the wedge. Oh, Ooh, just spits out. That was. That was a nice break. Speed clinging to that left edge of the fairway on 17. Rory McIlroy up one. Justin Rose joining now a trio of players in a tie for second at three under par. Slide down to the next page. Tiger Woods at one under. Tie for 10th with Bubba Watson, Francesco Molinari.
Last swing from Tiger Woods. Seen a lot of stingers as Woods under par. Round one. Well, welcome back to ESPN Plus at the 2007 PGA Championship. Tiger Woods put on a show. Putter was on full display all week at that PGA Championship record tying round of 63 on Friday. By the time he reached 18, crowd was on their feet. Even with the brutally hot conditions, temperatures at 105, he and X felt like it was 115 part of the week. This Woods wrapped up his fourth and most recent PGA Championship by two yeah, shots over Woody sure Austin. Feels more in hip here. But yeah, you look at those I like more in though. Huh? I like more in though. Yeah, I don't disagree. Okay. That's what we're feeling. I don't know why every flag's going that way. Even over there. See it behind you this thing? Show more across of it. Well, I, I, let, let's not rush it because we're just getting to the 18th tee. I just don't want to feel like it's. But yeah, we look at over eight, it looks like it's more in. Both flags over at eight green. I feel more in. Yeah, yeah, at least make sure we get a feel for it up there because what it's doing over on eight, I think, is what it's doing here. I like that. Yeah, I like that. All right, 14. Okay, 10 cover? Yep. Everything you need to know. They're that is everything you need to know. Yep. They're, do you agree with their wind assessment? Yeah, I was just going to say they nailed it. And Joey walking out to catch a little bit of the breeze, you know, 10 yards in front of Tiger. That was a smart thing to do. <laughs> yeah. Tiger conferring with his caddy, Joe Lacaba, his approach to the 17th. Had the distance right, a little bit of a pull, but they know the wind will do that. But he dialed in the, the number perfectly. Well, we see McElroy hit a couple of those flighted wedges, yeah. you know, against the wind. Let's see if he's got another one. Ned, this is, yeah, this will be, uh, this is an opportunity to show off if he's really, if he feels good with that shot, because that's what it's going to take to get it up there close. Needs to cover the bunker at 95 yards. Comfortable about club? Uh, that's as strong as it's been. It's yeah. Been if it's that strong, it's fair. Yeah, I know. I, I feel like this. You good. Yeah, the wind's really kind of picking up now. Ned, is, it's got you. Got to be able to feel it down there on the ground. Oh yeah, this is the strongest it's been. You know, they're calling for a gust of up to 20. We're not there yet, but we're closing in on it. Mm -hmm. Wedge in hand for McElroy. I like the action again. Spins it back below the hall. Just out of the French. A little bit unfortunate. But that's always the risk, isn't it? Into the breeze with a back slope. Oh yeah, I mean, but that was a quality shot right there. That's that's very impressive yeah, to me. He's obviously been working hard on keeping those wedges it. down. Is that the back edge, or is that, the back edge or is that where it's still pitching? Uh, I'd say like 95 actually. Now, there's not much green for Jordan to look at here from the left yeah. side. 88 covers the bunker. Pin 16 on, five off the left. Oh, tucked on that left hand side. Trying to hold it off. And oh, such a good shot. Man, it's such a nice shot. I just need a breath more wind, it's right next to it. Yeah, he's kind of he's in a difficult place right now mentally. I mean, not difficult, but he's he's fighting it and he's you know, when you hit a good shot and it doesn't work out and he doesn't you know, he's made a couple bogeys in a row. He's starting a little frustrated. Yeah, he needs to get you know, he and Michael need to kind of get relaxed again and just get to playing, which he will. Well, yeah, you get in that mode of, OK, where do I want to miss it instead of thinking about where do I want to hit it? 
and you said how narrow this screen is, Scott, and he could not afford to be short in the bunker, so then you start saying, okay, I'm gonna miss it a little deep, and you just get off track with what you wanna do mentally. Well, and I think the wind, uh, not direction, but, but velocity picking up now is, you know, they gotta adjust to a new, kind of a new reality. Ned, how different are conditions now to what we were seeing, say, an hour, hour and a half ago? Yeah, well, now we're in Oklahoma. This morning, we were more maybe like North Tennessee or something. <laughs> it was cool. It wasn't windy. But right now, sun is out and the wind is pumping. Yeah, I think this is this is what was expected. And this is what we're going to have for a couple days. Tiger was saying the forecast is going to be different every day in this wind. It's supposed to be all different directions. We're going to see a different golf course almost every day. You agree with that? Yeah, I think tomorrow is is still going to be it's going to be mainly a south wind, maybe a little more southwest. So it won't be dramatically different. But then once this little front rain event comes through Friday night, then the wind's going to blow 10 to 20 out of the north, which would be completely opposite. And then Sunday, the forecast is for kind of light east northeast winds which will be a beautiful day so it will play different every day no no doubt about it well such a tough putt to make i mean you just scott trying to lag this one close it's fast it's down breeze and it's cut right on a knoll so at the hole it'll bounce off to the right yeah, it's all it, about yeah speed. he's uphill then downhill and then side hill and now the wind's becoming a factor Smith for birdie not bad that's, that's another one of those putts that looks pretty awkward with that that hole location is just in a it's just in a spot that just it doesn't look like there's a flat part around the hole. That's because there isn't <laughs> the only flat spot is the hole. Well that that may very well be the case that better spot to make it from where Tiger is or where Rory is all day long where Tiger is. He's right up the slope. He knows what it's going to do whereas Rory's ball might scrub some speed coming out through the fringe and he's got way more break to deal with. Just one birdie so far on the 17th. You know, we've got all these cross sections of a course, and the marshal here on 17 is doing his job. He's clearing people behind the 17th green, but he forgot that the 18th tee comes right over the corner of the green, so the guys on 18 are having to wait for the marshal to move himself. <laughs> That's a new one. Yeah, there's a little bit of everything. There's a lot of congestion. Tiger stepping into his birdie putt. I think it just came out a little a little bit not slower out of that little fringe area he was on because he I think he had it read perfectly and just kind of lost the speed at the beginning. Woods taps it in. One under down through eight. Yeah, this little hole, it's its a hard to hold a birdie. You think you should birdie it every day. But obviously so far today, it had not been very successful. I mean, so far today, scoring average of 4.33 on the 17th. Yeah, the hole before was 532, and this one's 370. And it's maybe, it's and, probably similar. And the 17th is playing more difficult than the 16th. No. Here's the leader, Roy McElroy, for another birdie. Up to the fringe, and wow. 
That was a great try right there. I, I really thought that was going to catch a piece. Roy remains in the lead at four under par. Yeah, he looks great, doesn't he? Just gets right up there and gets after it. Looks like 2014 Roy McIlroy. It does. I know he's been doing a lot of work and looks apparently he's done a lot of work in his head and got his routine and his attitude going the right direction. Two putt par for Jordan Spieth. The bogey streak ends at two. This would have been the ultimate heat check if Rory had gotten this birdie putt to fall. Yeah, that's that's a good way to put it. That would have been that was shooting a long three right there. That was a heat check. But um, what a great effort. That's, who says golfers aren't athletes? Yeah, showing off his athletic prowess. McElroy in first at four under. Tiger tied for 12th. Jordan one over. Speed, the only one in our feature group, currently over par and a tie for 38th. The nightmarish par four 18th, 490 yards. The scoring average so far, 4.385, second most difficult hole. And it's only going to go up because now that the wind's picking up, because the wind is basically right at you. I mean, so this hole, it's 490 on the card, but the tee shot add about another 20 because it's into the wind, and then you're going to add another 10 or so on the second shot. So it's it's going to play every bit of 520. And that, but without any help. <laughs> so, yeah, this hole is just, I mean, you, the fairway kicks into the water. If it doesn't go in the water, you're kind of behind the trees. you just got to stripe one up the left side and take your medicine. One birdie so far today, four bogeys, one other. Take your four, and go on your merry way to the first. Yeah, it's kind of a par four and a half. Where does this rank among its toughest closing holes in major championship golf? Well, it is definitely right up there because it is a uh, I mean, it just it, it requires two solid shots and two good putts to make a par. I mean, the green is I mean, the, the it's really difficult to get on the green, but then the green's impossible, too. It's got so much slope that it's a difficult green to read. You're, I think we remember the 94 U.S. Open. The three guys that had a chance to win all three putted the last hole. I mean, when is that? You know, oh, one it, or oh, one. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, one. Sorry. The eight, oh, one. Goose and Stewart sank. Right. Yeah. Yeah, they all three part of the last hole. When, is, when have you ever seen that happen? Yeah. It's just a it's a very slopey green. Um, very tough pin positions. So and now you throw the wind in. I'm a little bit surprised that they're playing the back tee today, knowing that the wind was going to blow. 20. I kind of thought they might play that the hole at 460. They haven't given them much of a break, have they? No, but I mean, they know what they're doing. Obviously, they're they, they got a, a great tournament on their hands, but um, this is a real test right here. They couldn't have stretched out this back nine <laughs> a whole lot farther just in general. Well, and part of this historic renovation, that's the new back tee that Gil Hansen, Jim Wagner built and they replaced a gradual slope in the fairway landing area with a flatter plateau, but that creek that we're going to see has now been extended and really dissects the landing area. Yeah, you were the, the creek changes the hole. The creek used to stop at about 300 yards in the middle of the fairway. And you could if you, you really didn't get to the creek, but it but if you hit it to the right, you were just in the trees. Now, if you hit it to the right or it kicks right, you're in the creek. So that just and then if you do hit it in the creek, you have to drop out your stymie. So it really, you really, really have to favor the left side, which makes the hole much longer. So 
It's quite a finishing hole. There's no question. How do you stay sharp when you have a round like today that's going to probably take five plus hours? Well, I think you. These guys, well, these guys, Rory, Rory is obviously very sharp, so he's going to try to keep doing the same thing. His his challenge is going to be in between the shots, like you said. Um, I used to just have a song I would sing all day to myself. I mean, I sing terrible, so I'd never let anybody else hear it, but you just have to have your mind on something else. So, evolution of Southern Hills, the average fairway width was just 27 yards back when you played the 2007 PGA Championship. That's now been extended to 40 yards. Water is in play on 15 of the 18 holes. A lot of that's they've extended the fairways, but shaved down the rough to make the, the creek more in play. 71 greenside bunkers. You see the average green size, a little more than 5,000 square feet. And Tom Watson was quoted as saying with the, the historic renovation. I didn't realize how much the water now comes into play compared to what it used to be like here. You're, you're right. The, the creeks are are much. It seems like there's a creek on every hole now, which makes it, you know, a lot more prominent. Like you said, the fairways slope towards the creek. The fairways are running, running out more into the hazard areas. So it has cha it's changed. And, and I think it's a, a pretty solid restoration of what it used to be like. So Roy said, I think strategy off the tee and into the greens is pretty simple. Then it gets a little more nuanced whenever you get on and around the greens. Well, that, that's every golf course, fairways and greens. You know, I was, and Rory is, is uh, doing that perfect. He's got the greens figured out. But yeah, it's, this is a ball striker's paradise right here. Rory is excited to tee it up at Southern Hills. He said it gives you options off the tee. You're going to see a lot of different strategies, guys hitting driver where others aren't. We've seen our, that already on this night with Rory taking driver off a lot of tees, and Tiger Woods has already hit three stingers. Yeah, Rory went on to say it's going to be a wonderful test. There, there's options. There's no doubt about it. There, you can you can play the course a lot of ways, and I think if the wind blows, then there's not. The way Tiger is playing it is not necessarily the wrong way. So they will all hit driver on the 18th here, though, George. Back in, ready to hit. Go ahead, four under, leading by one. Yeah, Rory saying it's good. I think he was basically trying to hold it against the wind a little there. It's blowing kind of in from the right. He flew that a good 10 yards farther than he was in the practice round into this breeze. Uh, the adrenaline is pumping for Rory. Tiger Woods up next. Oh, that's exactly what you wanted. Great swing. Yeah, it was a nice, another good looking swing. That one caught the down slope, gentlemen, and kicked all the way, Scott, almost into the creek by the crosswalk. Position A, big time for Tiger. Well, that was. That's one thing that you hope happens. Here's Jordan. Lower trajectory headed down the left side needs a kick to the right. Oh, and it didn't. It went dead straight, and if anything, left, and that will settle down. 
Just a foot into the rough. That was unfortunate. Yeah, it's tough to make hay out of the out of the hay, especially on this hole. He's going to have to hit some sort of like massive jumper to try to roll it up the hill. Once we get up to the three tee shots here and you really get the sight line of what these guys face with the elevation change on this second shot gives you an appreciation for just how significant an uphill approach it is to the 18th. The day so far with our featured group number one here on ESPN plus right out of the gates. What yeah. were we going to see out of Tiger Woods? Yeah. How was this answer? It was right on. Three feet. That's a great way to start. Kind of get into the into the round. Woods burning his first hole of the day. Par 3 14th. A yeah, wonderful tee shot. Really, I mean, as good a shot as you can hit on that hole. You kind of landed on the front, rolled up pin high, center cut the putt. Tiger's second birdie. He would give one back on the 15th. He's at one under Rory. Kicked it into gear on the 12th. Yeah, after a 354 yard drive. Kind of showed off what he's been working on, that little sawed off knock down wedge there, which you're going to have to have around here with the wind blowing. And that was a wonderful shot. Rory Burney to 12th, the 632 yard par 5 13th. Rory there in two, splashes out the bunker shot to within a couple feet. Another kick in birdie. Birdie, birdie. Then on the par 3 14th. With what I shot, what I thought was just a beautiful iron shot right over the flag. Beautiful putt to follow it up. Yeah, Rory and Tiger both make a birdie on the 14th. Rory wasn't done. The 15th, the par four. After a wet shot, one hopping it up there. Center cut another one. McElroy dialed. Rory at four under at first. Tiger. T11 at the moment at one under. And Jordan Spieth over par on his round. So 63, the, the low round in PGA Championship history. Tiger had one back in 2007 when Ray Floyd won all the way back in 82. He opened with the 63. I think a 63 is out there this week. Only if the weather cooperates. Um. Rory on a good pace. Oh, he's on eight. a great pace. I, unfortunately, I don't think it's going to get any easier from here because the wind's going to keep picking up. But yeah, you know, I mean, you never know. Um, but it will obviously require a round like Tiger had, which is where he was in the fairway and on the greens all day and making putts. Um, I think it's just going to get more difficult from here on out. 17 rounds of 63 all time in the PGA Championship. With two of those coming at Southern Hills. Yeah, this is Jordan here. This is what I was saying. He's going to have to hit some like three wood or some sort of wood and just hit a low screamer and see if it'll roll up the hill. Because you really have no other shot. That's the only option. If he's going to take it on, you know, you try to hit that chop cut hybrid that kind of rides the face. Comes off with no spin and then runs 60 yards. You know the other option is just take your medicine, lay up. Well, that would have that would require a really bad lie. I mean, no, the, the lie is good enough. Well, Ned, you do not want to keep it. You do not want to lay up and have to hit that third shot from 160 playing 190. You're, you, he'll 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 get it up there around the green somewhere. Um, and, and it is possible to roll it up that hill if you hit a real screamer <clears throat> out of the rough. I've actually done that before. It kind of looks it looks like you're uh, not doing much, but when it runs up on the green, you start feeling pretty good. And let me clarify, Scott, I said laying up, meaning not of the creek, but taking an iron and punching mm -hmm. it down to the fairway through the crosswalk here and leaving yourself you know, some type of yardage. And, 50 yards, 60 yeah. yards, something like that in the fairway, in the short grass. Right. Okay. Well, that's, yeah, that's a possibility. Um, you know, every, I don't know what uh, everybody's going to have to have their own 
idea and their own thoughts of what they want to do. So. Yeah, you said the lies not too bad for speed in the rough. No, no, he, this club that he has out now is the right one. Just trying to think through, you know, what else could he do? He's not going to be able to take a four iron and gouge it out. So this is this is the proper shot. Yeah. Well, and he's got to be. You, the second right bunker is, is OK. Even the first one, the left bunker is, is not good here. So if he can roll it up there, you got to almost miss it right, even though it it seems like you're short sided. You're actually pitching back up into the hill. So that's I mean, he knows that. But yeah, he's got to be either center of the green or somewhere in the right bunkers is going to be his miss. Front edge. Oh, came out straight left. Get in the rough. Get in the rough. Get in the rough. That is waist high, and it's got exactly where you said you didn't want to be. That was the risk of taking that shot on. Left bunker. Yeah, he just said it. You can't be there. You have a blind uphill 53 yard bunker shot into the wind. Let's see what McElroy tries to do out of the deep rough. 190 to the front. He has to carry it as far as he can. And this on a good line. Boy, it came out hot. Heater. Yeah. Wow, what a shot. That's why he's your leader, George. Good spot for McElroy just through the 18th green. Yeah, that was fantastic. Our colleague set of this shot for Tiger he said you know what's missing divots <laughs> this is the divots free zone down here yeah. according to Billy Crescent perfect place to be 162 covers the front edge the whole location is 20 on Tiger hates it no, he hates it that might be the only place worse than where Jordan is over. See the impact. Tiger knew immediately. Yeah, I think he was trying to hit a little flighted cut maybe with a probably a six iron and he just kind of double crossed it. And when you that's called the pull kill. When you pull one, they usually go further. Why is that in a worse spot than worse speed? Well, he is going to be looks he's going to have a downhill bunker lie out of sand that doesn't spin very good to a downhill green downwind. So it's it's going to he's going to have to find. A soft spot to try to land it and keep to keep it anywhere around the hole. They both have they're both in difficult spots to put it mildly. The greens a little more receptive than you were anticipating at the start of the week for the first round. Yes, so far they are. But I mean, I, you, I kind of expected we were talking about that yesterday. It's Thursday morning. You know, the last thing they want to do is make it a, you know, a debacle right off the bat. So they're going to keep it. They're going to let it. They're going to let it marinate. And it'll and the course will change itself and, and Kerry will do a good job of adapting to that. So. The more the wind blows, the harder and the. The, you know, the harder the courses get, the higher the scores are going to get, and the more difficult everything's going to get. So it's a long process. You know, after Tiger hit that shot, kind of looked down at his ankle and his leg and he rolled it a few times. And you know, he was on the upslope and almost as if he tried to push off of it, Scott, and there was nothing there. And so the body doesn't turn and the face shuts down. Yeah. You know, yeah. There's. There's not. Yeah, you get on that right side. That's the one thing. It's kind of like the 17th hole. You get on the right side of the fairway there and there's not any level lies. Ned, how does Tiger look walking today compared to what we saw yesterday in the practice round? He, he looked fantastic until after that shot and he was laboring now coming up the hill and he, and he definitely tweaked something with that shot because now it looks like what we saw to Tiger on the weekend at Augusta.
Jordan's been wearing that expression the, the past few holes. Tiger, none too pleased with his second. Rory, <laughs> shocked that his went through the 18th. Jordan has that squirrel stuck in a traffic kind of look. Not exactly sure which way to go. And this shot is. He's going to get him. He's going to get a mouthful of sand here, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. this is it's just brutal. I mean, yeah. this is not one you've practiced. You have to clip it just right, fly it all the way to the hole, yeah. and about 20 feet left. And this is an all or nothing kind of shot. It really is. On the slightest bit of that was, That's really, really good. Took the putter out of the bag and ripped off the putter cover and threw it down. Yeah, well, that is. Uh, that's hard to explain how good a shot that really was into the wind. Can't see where you're going. You know tough very tough shot right there. That was really really good. Sometimes a par save can be what ignites. Absolutely. There's no question now he's got to make the putt. <laughs> so you can see Ned Tiger's got to almost aim left to the green doesn't he. Yeah just about I mean this is coming in at 90 degrees. You know how hard this shot is. Just keeping it on the green is going to be a win. Yeah. Oh. I think he only flew that a, a step or two further than he wanted because he was trying to get it. He was, had the right idea to land it in the fridge to take some of the speed off. Yeah, and keep it below the and get it below the hole. Yeah, it was just that's a very bad spot to be. That's kind of what you're saying. Above the hole here on most holes. This is bad news. This doesn't have a lot of break, does it, here, Ned? I was trying to find some, and it really doesn't. It's just the speed, if anything, it's going to work right. a little bit off the edge of the cup from his right to left. It's just that little downhill downwind. Here's the leader McElroy. Over tapped it. It'll be a stress test par part. Yeah, now he's going to have to tap the next one. Yeah, that that looks dangerous, Ned. I mean, it had to look extremely fast to him. And also the wind at his back, right? Because that makes things even more difficult and subconsciously you hit it a little bit softer. No question. All three of these guys trying to scramble and save par on the 18th. Scoring average right now for the 18th, 4.5. And it's going to continue to go up. This group's not going to help any. This is the hardest hole on the course. This one works from right to left and challenging to get it all the way to the cup. Slower than it looks. Tiger to make the turn in 34. Oh. They hit a good putt. Would have been a heck of an escape. Mm -hmm. Just a really poor iron from the fairway. Yeah, it's just it's just the 18th hole is living up to what the 18th hole is going to be all week. It is a it is a hard par. You can't make them. You know you can't make a mistake. Second bogey his last four holes. Tiger at even. Out in 35. How do you rate that front nine from Tiger? I, I, you know what? He's fine. I'm more concerned if his is limping more and stuff like that because he's he's striking the ball pretty good. The shot he had into the screen was a lot more difficult than it looked like. It, every one of these shots into the screen is difficult. So if he, you know. If you, shoot, if you shoot even par today, 
You're golden. Just so delicate. Yeah, wind blowing. Break. It doesn't break that much. Another bogey for speed. Yeah, he still looks a little out of sorts. Two over 37. Scott, this is one of those putts in your mind. You're saying, come on, man, make this. Let's sprint our way over to the back nine. This is all about momentum. Yeah, it is. But it, it really what he's got to be thinking about is exactly what he's been thinking about on every shot so far. Just do your job and hit the putt and it goes where it goes. McElroy to stay bogey free. What a par. Yep. Rory four under 31. Very impressive start right there. And that's that's the recipe today. You needed the we were talking the first nine holes before the wind really gets to ripping is where you got to score. So it was really the first hour hour and a half the wind was laying down and Rory ripped off those four straight birdies from 12 through 15. That, that is, he was prepared. I know he's been doing a lot of mental work. You know with Bob Rotella who simplifies everything and that's what Rory looks very simple today doesn't he. In his last couple starts Wells Fargo had the slow start there battled all the way back to finish fifth. Masters we had talked about was never really seriously in contention but that Sunday 64 Rory was saying it did wonders for him just mentally going forward to finish runner up at Augusta. Yeah, I mean, that was evident from just how excited he was. <clears throat> he knew he wasn't going to win, but how excited he was, obviously, the bunker shot he hit. But even the whole backside, he played really great and was thrilled with that. We just saw the back nine. Scott, what would you say is the harder nine here at Southern Hills? Uh, is there one? Yeah, no, I think they're actually, I think they're relatively even. I think the back nine, you can, you can score the first four holes, and then it gets quite a bit tougher. Um, front nine is more of a, a mix. There's a couple two or three hole spans where you can you can have some good birdie chances. But then you know there's a number the second hole the third hole with the wind today the seventh hole the, the eighth hole is two. I don't know what they have it playing today but you know 240 249 but into, yeah. into the wind. So uh, the, the scoring average almost identical right now. For the two it's, a, it's, so. a very, it's a very level. wide you had to be in the fairway to hit the green so I would assume Rory's going yeah going with driver he can pretty much cover everything Rory's been nuking driver today smoked pipeline he's gonna have 75 yards to the flag Right in the middle of the freeway. Another fairway for McElroy. Let's see if Tiger changes his strategy. Because normally, in your well, in the previous times he's hitting an iron stinger off this tee. But he's going. I think he can carry the bunkers too, so he might as well take them out of play. into the trees on the first. Yeah, that's, a dip, that's a bad spot. Very hard to hit the green from the right rough here. Yeah. 
Yes. Yep. Spieth has bogeyed three of his last four holes. Can he right the ship this night? You know, as a, this is kind of the place to do it right here. You know, you get your mythical little break between the front nine and the back nine. And early in the rough, but he's he just he's got to remain patient and stick to his plan. But he's obviously he's a little off. He's just barely missing fairways, missing putts. He's a little fidgety and frustrated. Just hasn't been super sharp. I'm going to look at the tee shot from the leader, Roy McIlroy. And this just a thing of beauty from the four-time major champion. Twice, Roy has hoisted the Wanamaker off to a phenomenal start right now at the PGA leading. Watch your favorite players from tee to green on all 18 holes this morning's feature groups. Been watching group number one, Tiger Woods, Jordan Spieth, Rory McIlroy. Feature group number two, Victor Hovland, Will Zalatoris, Cameron Smith. Number three is Bubba Watson, Justin Rose, Patrick Reed, trio of major champions. Feature group number four, Deki Matsuyama, Xander Shoffley, and Tony Finau. The three tee shots is our group, which started their day on the 10th, has made their way to their back nine. The par four first, Rory McIlroy, the only one to find the fairway. We'll see if Tiger Woods is contending with any tree trouble for his second. McIlroy inside 100 yards. He just He's just bombing it right down the middle. So when Rory's like that, we, we've seen what can happen. Well, it's infectious for Rory when he's doing that with his driver. It seems to elevate all other parts of his game, not only because of I mean, the short irons that he has into these greens, but it seems to start putting with some more freedom as well. Yeah, he's doing everything with freedom right now, so obviously he's very well. A long way to go, though. Ned, are you able to take a look at Tigers? Yeah, you know, I'm just not sure I can quite get enough on this to attempt to carry the bunker and hold the green. Uh, the tree is not directly in his way, but he's going to have to carve something around it. So I, I would be looking over to the left front of the green. That's about 125 yards from where he stands. He could get aggressive, Scott, but I just seem I'd be shocked. That's not I'd, part of his game no, plan right I'd now. I'd be shocked if he did anything other than front left. And if it trickles onto the front left fringe, that's a bonus. But I don't think there's. I, I don't think there's any way you can keep it on the green if it's any kind of a hot lie. And I bet he knows that. I know he knows that. Like he went in the bag for a little more loft. It's just bright rough is just the worst angle to this green. So yeah, he's just he's playing. He's doing what he had to do. You really don't have any other shot. Jordan has a much better chance of knocking it on the green because of just because of the angle. You know, think about the last two drives that he's hit barely into the fairway, uh, just through the fairway rather into the rough. I mean, he right now such a mental test for mm -hmm. for Jordan. Yeah, it, yeah, it's such a big difference that that 12 inches right there. Yeah, it goes from being aggressive oh, and a green light to just trying to get this within 25 feet. 25 feet from right here would be a really, really good shot. 110 to the front. Can't go with the flag. Trying to land it on the front. Land it short and rolled up. And that may go over the green. He needs to sit down. That's a great shot. That shows you how hot. I mean, hot as in flyer lies this, this grass. He landed that, what, 15 yards short of the green? 
McElroy wasting no time for his second. Yeah, Go right at it. It's just a yard, probably a yard or two from getting it to bounce forward a little bit more. Kind of probably feels like he left one there, but I don't know. After that tee shot, I'd feel pretty good about myself. But you want a closer second shot than that when well, you have 96 yards in and you're already leading the PGA Championship yeah. by a shot at four under. But you got to be patient, too. <laughs> yeah. I'm impressed with Jordan's shot right there because that it is all a guessing game when it comes out a heater and these this first screen slopes away you know from front to back it's one of the few that you know it's one of the few that that will once you go over you go way over so it's a little it's a tough shot and downwind it makes it very difficult to get the distance right it's talking with Chris Kirk in its practice round and he was saying he had a jumper went about 50 yards over into the concessions that passed the second hole. There's the third shot for Tiger Woods. Kind of a breaker right to left. Trying to get at the right speed. He needs to sit down. Scott. Tiger had that quick start was was 200 through five doesn't seem quite as sharp the past four and a half holes now. What does what, he need to do to turn it around? Just make this putt for par here and hit a solid drive. He, he I mean it's just, the golf course is going to end. Up. Rory's making it look easy right now, but it, it's not easy. And you know he's missed a couple fairways. Well, he's missed the yeah you know, he's missed this fairway and he's hit a couple of wayward. You know, iron shots. You know, the last hole, obviously, he's just he's just got out of position, which is unlike him. So, and he got out of position right here on the first hole. Um, he'll go back. Like, I, if you shoot even par today, you're you're in good shape. So, he knows that. And you know, he's just he's taking his medicine. He'll make you know, if he hits good shots, he'll make some more birdies. How does his game look compared to what we saw at the Masters? I think it actually looks a little bit better the way he's swinging at it and some of the quality of shots, but I think that's almost irrelevant. I think it all depends on his physical stature. This, one's, this is a very fast putt for slow greens right here, George. Burning putt for McElroy. Pretty good lag. Very good. Downhill, downwind. Ned, give me a wind report. It's still windy. It's still windy. Has <laughs> it picked up a little bit more? It's about where we were a couple holes ago. I, you know, the 17th hole was the strongest it's been all day. Just kind of comes and goes, but it's at a steady, I would say, 10 to 12 right now. Okay, so not terrible. No, not terrible. Not to the point where you're taking it into account on the greens, although here, you know, the wind comes straight down the first. It might give it a little push. Yeah, the, the first greens generally, or kind of the first fairway is not a bad place to kind of get the wind because, you know, you're blocked up on top of the hill by the clubhouse. But when it starts whipping, you can kind of get into it right in this part of the golf course. This is the kind of putt you can make by accident. Throw it out to the right. Back uphill. It bobbled about halfway there, hit something. Yeah, yeah. Had the line. Yep, had it on a good on a good line. Just it's a part of the first speed two over from ten. You know, this it just takes you know, I think last year we were covering 
the eventual winner, and he was two over par through. Phil Mickelson was three over through six. Yeah, and he just kind of, you can't, yeah, there's, there's no reason to give up yet. You just keep plugging away, keep playing. It's very rare that you play great four days in a row. You're going to have some struggles, so. This just out on the left edge, maybe a little bit more yeah. for Tiger. Depends on the speed. If he get, yeah, if he hits a solid putt, he can make this putt. It's not a lot of break. This would be a huge momentum saving par for Tiger Woods. Oh boy. Also sputtering the last five holes now with three bogeys. McElroy to remain bogey free. Playing wonderful golf today. Rory looking extremely confident, four under through ten. Sure does. McElroy with a one-shot lead over a trio of players who are in a tie for second at three under par. Here's the second hole, a different look now with the split fairway off the tee. This is hole from the tee box and it's an intimidating hole you know at 500 yards does play a little down mainly from the left with the south wind but this is a uh, this is a post you know this is like a postcard hole right here it, it looks awesome McElroy with driver almost straight back into the wind He is in full flight right now. Yeah, that looks like just a bullet. Perfect. Is it more into the wind or is it left to right? Well, when he hit it, it was straight into the wind. You know, it's kind of buffering a little bit. Definitely coming off of the left as well. Yeah, because kind of the shot is the kind of the right edge or the or the yeah, the right edge of that big tree. The right edge of the of the leaf line the drip line and let it cut with the wind This should end up in the left center in the short grass, but that tree will definitely be a factor for his second. Well, Ned, the good news about that tree is they've trimmed it up so high that you can see through and, and you, all, if you could miss the big fat trunk part, you're okay. Tiger now one over on his round. Good swing there. All three tee shots in the fairway on the second. Rory McElroy, one shot lead. We may never know what made Bob Vokey take on the world of wedges, but golfers everywhere are lucky he did. What are maestros made of? Dedication and effort. Because no matter how many times we try and fail, mastery is achieved when we challenge the norm. Maestro Dove, smoothness master. 
My name is Gary. Pastel. Josie. I have MS. I have MS. MS, MS is, is what, what we, we have. have. I take Bocrevus. An infusion treatment that's two times a year. For adults with relapsing or primary progressive forms of multiple sclerosis, Ocrevus is proven effective in reducing relapses in RMS and slowing disability progression in RMS and PPMS. Don't take Ocrevus if you've had a life-threatening allergic reaction to it or have hepatitis B. Tell your doctor about vaccinations or if you've had hep B as it could come back. A common side effect of Ocrevus is infusion reactions and some may require hospitalization. It can increase your risk of infections, which can be serious and may decrease certain types of immunoglobulins. While PML was not reported in clinical trials, it could happen. An increased risk of cancer, including breast cancer, may exist. MS is what we have, not who we are. Not who we are. Not who we are. Ask if Ocrevus is right for you and join our community. Luckily, I have a wife that understands everything that needs to go into practice and preparation to make sure that you can be the best that you can possibly be. There's also the part of me that's maybe a little more relaxed about it all because you know, when it was just me, all that really defined me was golf and results. And we have a shining star at sunset. Rory continues his run to greatness. Winning is a, is a wonderful feeling and that's, it's what I want to do, but I also find joy in my life outside of that. So if that doesn't happen, it doesn't hit me quite as hard as it used to. There is a balance there and it, if anything, it's, it's helped me a little bit just to be a little bit more relaxed about it all. Such a great viewpoint Rory McIlroy has. Uh, at this stage of his career, his best career finish that we've seen in each major. Of course, four-time major champion, had that runner-up at the Masters. That was his best finish at Augusta National. But the major drought stretching all the way back to the PGA Championship at Valhalla in 2014. That's back when it was contested in August. So nearly eight years. Yeah, which is hard to explain. Uh, with his talent, but they're not easy to win, and there's only four of them a year, so um, he seems like he's got his sight set on one this year. Well, he's picking right up where he left off at the Masters right. in the final round. Yeah, so he's um, maybe he's reassessed his goals and his what, you know, where he is. Obviously, he's got a different perspective now. I actually played with him when he was 17 at the British Open in the final round at Carnoustie and I was amazed. I've never seen a 17 year old like that. So it doesn't shock me from that one round of golf that I played with him. That was well, back in 07. Uh, yeah, at, at Carnoustie. And it was, uh, it doesn't shock me that he is what he is because I'd never seen a 17 year old like I said, but he's not done. I mean, he might be the guy that if he could win, say this week, he might win another handful of them because he's that kind of talent. Yeah. Says 203 in for Tiger second. And the wind into off the left. I'd like to land it if he could. 195, get that skip to the hole. Yeah, just middle, cannot go wrong, Scott. Yeah, no. Yeah. Middle of the green's great here. Anything that gets to the hole is, might be a mistake. I think the gallery willed that one to stay on the green. Well, that's, that's good. That helps. Yeah, there's only five steps behind it, Ned, and if it goes over, it's got a 50 50 chance of making it all the way to the creek. So you really can't be aggressive to this whole location. And Jordan, he's got to keep it under the tree, wrap it around it, and can't afford though to hit too much hook because if it does it's gonna land on the green and skate left. So you'd expect this to land on the front third of the green. Yeah I would say at the most. 
This is awfully aggressive. Yeah, nice shot. Yeah, very good shot. Michael Greller handed Jordan Speed the putter. Up ahead after another big tee shot, it's Roy McIlroy. 332. That's all he's averaging off the tee today. Yeah. What a shot from McIlroy. Beautiful. That's that that's an ideal shot right there. I mean, you leave it just a little short, putt uphill. Because right past that, right past the hole, it starts going downhill. McElroy with some A plus ball striking today. He is he is dialed in. He's really putting on a clinic. And the only green he's missed, or well, generally the only fairway he's missed was because it didn't fly another yard. <laughs> um, yeah, he's putting on a clinic. It's a, this is very impressive. You can see he's holding off the club. He's really he's he's ready for the wind is what he is. He's ready for the wind to start howling because he's really holding the face and keeping the ball under control. Roy talking about the slow starts he's had. They said, I think over the past few years, the things that have stopped me from getting in contention or being able to win these majors <clears throat> are big numbers and shooting myself out of it sort of early. Two things that he's avoided today. Just played the nine holes Tuesday, nine holes Wednesday, the front nine and the back nine. He's gotten in the previous look at Southern Hills, but his big thing, he said, I'll take execution over preparation any day. If you're executing the shots, you're hitting the ball well, and the ball is looking where you're going, that's more than half the battle. I, you know, I saw that quote, or I heard him say that, and I would, I would tend to agree, particularly for a player like him. I mean, he's on, you know, what, You'd almost call like in the zone autopilot right now. It doesn't matter where he's playing. If he hits the shot that he's seeing with his, you know, before he hits it, that's why he's Rory McIlroy. I mean, he, I agree with him. Let his caddy do all the, the dirty work and get everything. And if you trust him, which he does, uh, you know, just execute the shots. Tiger Woods with back-to-back -back bogeys right now. Critical point in his round. Only made back-to-back -back bogeys once back in 2007 at the PGA Championship. That was in the first round. But that first round, Tiger opened with a round of 1 over 71. Yeah, and I think the scores are going to be similar when it's all said and done to that. So it should be a nice, you know, two-putt two -put up and down, whatever you want to call it here. But it's all about speed. Well, it's for birdie. Oh, well. Oh. A little frisky with that one. Yeah, it starts picking up speed. Spieth and McElroy hit the second hole in regulation. Jordan, 44 feet plus. Roy McIlroy, pretty good look at birdie, just 14 feet away. And Ned, you got to look at Jordan's putt. Yeah, I was just thinking, you know, most of the putts he's hit today have come up short. And after watching Tiger's ball trying to race by the cup there, now the breeze back into his face. There's got to be a lot going on upstairs in his head. Everything working from left to right at the hole. But Scott, as you know, if you're thinking about speed, yeah. it's hard to hit a good putt. Yeah, and th this green is is uh, a little. I know they know this, but it's a little deceptively more 
front to back than you than it looks to your eye. You know, kind of like the first hole. It actually start the last half of the back half of the green really starts going towards that creek, and it doesn't necessarily look like it does, but it picks up speed. And you were you called it, Ned. He's just. You don't really want to race it by. Um, and the conditions are only going to get tougher, so you just do your stuff and play your game and keep going. Well, if you're Rory McIlroy, you're doing your stuff pretty good today. He is doing his stuff. You know what? He, this is a very makeable putt here as well. You're absolutely right. Uh, there isn't a whole lot in it. So it's again just a matter of can you get the speed right as you go up the hill. Yeah. It is technically one of the faster uphill putts you'll have here. So I think you'll give it a good run. McElroy for birdie to push it to five under par. <laughs> Creeps that one in. Rory now with the two shot lead. That was a nice birdie right there, gentlemen. That was the second hole is birdie. a hard hole. Fifth birdie on the day for Rory McIlroy. Yeah, just perfect speed. Not much break to it. Putting with so much freedom today. He every everything is with freedom. I mean, this is a. This is some, this is great TV right here is what it is watching Rory McIlroy play like this. Just never seen him pull the club with such conviction. The second it's his turn he's yeah, stepping he's into it. Very decisive which is probably all he really needs. Got a beat on this par putt. Yeah, inside that right edge, just stroke it. This is why you stand on the practice green and hit a bunch of these. Tiger needs this one. Third straight bogey now. Woods the two over. Another drop shot. Yeah, unfortunately, really been a couple of unforced errors on 18 and on this one, you know, to make bogeys. So, Let's see if you can get back into a, a little better rhythm. Short par putt for speed, but we've seen some strange misses from this distance so far this season. Yeah, I like that he's gone through his entire routine here. Just make a great stroke. Watch it go in the dead center of the hole. Build a little confidence. Well, wind must be picking up. He's saying the ball's oscillating there, so that would only be from a wind gust. Here it's starting to howl here in Tulsa. Yeah, Ned, I like what you said there. Go through your whole routine, even on a little two footer, particularly when the wind's blowing, and particularly when you're trying to find some rhythm for your game. You know, so it kind of has a double, double good. Me meaning for Jordan right there. You're trying to get your rhythm back and you can't be careless when the wind starts gusting. Jordan Spieth and Tiger was a two over. Rory seven ahead of them at five under with a two shot.
Just pipe and drive. Hammered another one. I mean, it's coming so out of the center of the face. It is as beautiful to watch as what it is. Yeah, it is. This is a vintage McElroy display. Uh, the tallest one? Uh, yeah, it's just, just right around. That's the trees. Uh, it's got a good clear. On the right. Uh, yes. On the right. Yes. I mean, he generates so much from his lower body power and speed. It's, it's really incredible. Here's Jordan Speed. Good one there. Thanks. Got it out there with Rory. We need Mr. Woods to hit one down the middle of the fairway here and get get the boat floating again. Tiger in the midst of a stretch with three straight bogeys. Good shot, Tiger! That was a good one. All three of these guys in the third fairway. Welcome back to feature group number one with Rory McIlroy, our leader, playing unbelievable golf at this point, just putting on a stripe show. Uh, and he's along with Tiger Woods and Jordan Spieth. And I am here with George Savrikas and Ned Michaels, and we are on the third hole. How about those three tee shots there, Mr. Verplank? Very, very nice. All three of them down the middle. Got an awkward little pin position here on the third, but the, but it is. They're all in good position where they might be able to get good looks at it. Tiger. Uh, my math 127 to the front Spieth. 118 and McElroy 115. That's to the front edge. The hole is cut six on so you can tack on. A handful of paces to each one of those numbers. You know, a little false fronts though that guards the edge of the green here Scott. Yeah and this one is and it's this one you need to this one of the few that you kind of need to get behind the hole. It really I mean it all it, it's you'll have a little downhiller but not like most holes you definitely need to fly it back at least to the hole here and hit it kind of more center of the green you have a pretty good putt at it. You want to take advantage of these tee shots this is the fourth easiest hole at Southern Hills. No question. I mean, they're, I mean, you're, I mean, the wind's blowing, blah, 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 blah. But they're, you're in go zone when you got 127. So you're, you're looking to get it there and get it close. Yeah, you got. It. Tiger has nine iron out. A solid swing, good position to have a putt at it, make a birdie, and kind of get going the right direction. This is a stretch. To this is your stretch right here. Three, four, five. Yes, oh. this is your stretch to get the train back on the tracks. All three good birdie holes. Yeah. Woods and Speed in the same spot at yeah. two over. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. 
Just a big sandwich for Jordan. Nope. <laughs> Stayed up there, tried hopping onto the green. He's going to take the high route here, McElroy. Yeah, that's kind of, I mean, I, he's not in terrible shape right there, but that's kind of the first. That's kind of the first mistake that they've made together because he, he's got to fly it past the hole. I mean, the Tiger flew it pen high and it stopped pretty good, but the only the awkward shot is where Jordan and Rory are now. Well, especially when you have a wedge coming in. Yeah, you got to get you got to get it. You need to hit it past the hole, and if it sucks back to the hole, that's a bonus. But yeah, the only way to mess this up is to leave it short of the green. You know, for McElroy there, Scott, he was right in between clubs. Was it going to be a little feathered sand wedge or a hard lob wedge? Uh, it was it was one of those awkward ones, and he tried to flight it down and just kind of left it out to the right. Yeah, well, that happens. Look at what our featured group has done so far on the third, beginning with their tee shots, all three in the fairway. The only one to find the green with their approach, Tiger Woods. Which is. In the last three or four holes has not been the case, but um, none, they're not. None of them are horrible, but they're. Yeah. Rory and Jordan did that wasn't their best. But it's hard to hard to criticize anything really either one of them are doing, but Rory's just been on fire. Fire almost an understatement with yeah. a two shot lead right now. He's probably a lot more disappointed than I am <laughs> that he didn't hit it. Gimme. It's a variety, a variety of options from off these green complexes here at Southern Hills. Jordan's pulled putter. I'd assume Rory going to go with the same play. I, th think? I think so. Um, you know, they're, they're, the slopes are enough where the, the Bermuda grain is into you, so that makes chipping not impossible but a little more dicey so the sooner you can get it on the ground rolling kind of the better off you are so you know even like the little five wood or the three wood or the rescue clubs work pretty good into this stuff um, but if you're close enough and you've you know these guys are so good that they'll get the speed pretty good coming out of this fringy area You know, this one is one that Jordan could absolutely hold. It's kind of right in the saddle. He can throw it out to the right. Unless he really gasses it, speed won't be an issue. Yeah, but does it break to the right at the very end? But again, he's, that one didn't. he's just almost wishing it up there. Doesn't have a whole lot of conviction yet today on the greens. No, he hasn't been near as decisive as Rory. Just depends on how this comes out. You know, the first two or three feet are going to dictate the speed and if he hits a good putt or not. McElroy already with five birdies on the card. Get up. That one got caught up a little bit. Yeah, did you see it get scrubbed out? Yeah, that's the. That's the danger of trying to roll it against the grain like that. But you know, you, you pick your poison around here if you miss greens on how you're going to get it. You know, get it to get flighted either on the ground or flighted in the air how you want it to go. So he's probably still away, isn't he? Yeah, I would 
think it's still Rory just inside six feet for par. Oh yeah, it is Rory. Right now, Rory leading the field in strokes game putting. He's probably leading the field in about everything, isn't he? You know, Scott, the so probably, thing about leaving it short there is, if, at least if you run it by, you know what the putt is doing around the hole. Now you've still got a little bit of a question. Yeah, did you get a good look at this one? Yeah, and he's too, he's right in that saddle where he's in the fall line. It might kick actually from his heels to his toes a little bit off of that bunker. Yeah, I know it's a, this is an awkward little spot. And he did it. Another par save for McElroy. Five under through 12. Yeah, you'd hate to let one get away there. I mean, that's fairly obvious, but I love his demeanor and his conviction. He's just, he's playing like he's playing with his buddies at home. Two under the last six. He ties the lowest ever round in PGA Championship history with a 63. Well, nothing would shock me. You know, it's not going to be easy, but he's still has a, the par five fifth to play. Yeah. This would be a big one for Tiger here. Get this in and kind of start to right the ship. Get a little little pep in his step back. And it will be an enormous roar because they're 10 deep surrounding the entire green. Was right center pot at most at most. Four foot birdie punt for Tiger Woods. Pulling back to one over. Well, that was three solid. I mean, that was good shots right there. Really nice drive, beautiful iron, solid putt. He doesn't look too concerned. A lot of yard work here for Jordan. Not much in this putt. Just a little stroke tester. Speeth in with par. Jordan at two over, only one birdie on the card that came all the way back on the 12th, his third hole of the day. So Tiger now is taking the honor on the tee after that birdie on the third. The gallery eye view. Got to have the iPhone out. Oh, yeah. Get your picture video. Look at all those phones in the in the crowd. Yeah, everybody wants a video or a picture of the great one. Flyover now of the short par four fourth. Yeah, kind of a back into the wind from the right a little bit. And, and you can hit anything from the, the, the two iron stinger. You can hit driver here if you want. The creek kind of comes into play on the right. Most guys kind of try to lay it down there about a, about 110 from 100, 110 from the front edge to a very sloped green. Um, easily might be the most severe sloping green on the golf course, but it is back to front. It is on the side of the hill. What are the choices off the tee? Well, it, it, uh, uh, probably the two or three iron that Tiger hits here, or you can hit driver if you want. But I think with the conditions, with the wind blowing, pins up very barely over the front bunker. You need to try to get to a number that you like. Kind of similar to like the last hole. Tiger was obviously on a number he liked. He won 46 or 7, and he dialed it in right there. So he's looking for a certain number with this iron here.
Stinger should kick right if it stays in the that go in the rough. Well, it caught the left rough. I'm on the other side of the fairway and I can see the top of the ball. It didn't come out of the rough though? It did not come out of the rough. Well, that makes it a little tougher. You know, this now now he's in defensive mode, just trying to get it somewhere on the green. strategy this week is if he's hitting driver on this hole which I don't know why he wouldn't he kills it straight wow another oh my massive. goodness <laughs> far up is that he, he might be too close I mean, wow Carried that one 311 up the hill yep. into the wind while yeah. about 50 yards in for a second. Yeah, he might be too close, but uh, he can handle it. But that's just, uh, he's putting on a clinic right now. Speed also with driver. Headed up to left center as well. Just to kick a little right. Uh, really? Yeah, it's on the right on the flagpole. Yeah, that's really right on the edge. So can Tiger build on that birdie right now? One over through 12. We'll see what type of lie he has here on the par four fourth, his 13th hole of the day. The wind picking up. Welcome back to feature group number one on ESPN Plus. George Savarikis, Scott Verplank, Ned Michaels following the leader. Rory McIlroy, five under through 12, has been putting on a driving display. Look at the three tee shots. On the par four fourth, Rory's 327 yards, longest tee shot on the fourth so far, round number one. And the really impressive thing, in the middle of the fairway. It's just he is putting on a driving clinic. If he does that for four days, it's going to be it'll be impressive to watch. But he might be too close to the green here. I mean, to be able to really control the spin. So I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Scott, I've got him at 43 yards to the front edge. Right. Then five, five to the pin, on. and then it plays up about three or four yards from where he's at maybe five. It is into the wind though correct. Absolutely. So be able to use that as a backboard. Yeah that'll help him. Correct. What's Tiger's lie back there. Heater sitting up in the grass. So he's going to have a difficult time judging the distance and the spin. By my math, Tigers at 148 all the way to the hole. So he's got to be playing beyond the hole because you have to carry the front bunker. That's right. And Plus hope, that it, and hope that it stops. Six or seven yards up the hill. But as you know, sometimes when you catch those flyers, yep. they just come off with no spin and you can take the hill completely out of the equation. Sometimes now Tigers missed the fairway with stingers and put himself in a tough spot. Yeah, the, the stinger is all dependent on being in the fairway. He, he's perfect. I mean, he's fine if he's in the fairway there. But yeah, that, that's going to be something that he'll, I'm sure, is irritating him. And he'll have to clean up to uh, keep going, making more birdies, because you got to be in the fairway, particularly if you lay back. So now Jordan 75 to the hole. Give it another four up the hill. Call it 79 into the breeze, maybe 83 or 84. But Scott, he's got a couple of big blades of Bermuda right behind the ball. So despite that he's in the fairway, 
He could very easily catch a jumper here. Yeah, he's up kind of against the edge of the kind of the collar there, so adds a little difficulty to the shot. Well, he did what he had to do. Yeah. Just just that one little being up against the collar was just it totally threw everything out for that shot. Yeah, I mean there were literally two big blades of Bermuda just right up against his ball. And that's all it takes. Yeah, I mean you're looking at precision for the best players in the world and any something like that makes precision difficult. Rory already ran all the way up to the green to pace off the 45 yard second shot. Just gotta be trying to fly it just to the hole. And again. As good as you can do right there. That was spectacular. I mean, it's it, a very small, Ned, you're there in a very small area to land that in from 45 yards, correct? Oh, how cool a shot was that? That follow through into his left pocket. A little low spinner. That was fantastic. Rory's showing some versatility with his wedge game. He really is. I am highly impressed. I don't remember really I don't really remember watching him be this impressive with these little half shots. I don't remember him having these like it's like a pitcher changing speeds, these different gears that he's been showing off today. Yeah, that's always been his I mean Perceived weaknesses is wedge games not not very good because he hits it way too high and doesn't flight the ball. Well, dude, he is flighting the ball today. It is, it is very impressive. His ball striking numbers. He said nine out of eleven fairways, nine out of thirteen greens. That's a pretty good, pretty good recipe around here. And that, you know, if you drive it like that, in the fairway, three thirty every hole. That is a huge advantage. Tiger now from the green side bunker with his third. A little uphill into the wind. It's just hard. It's just no spin. This bunker game hasn't been sharp today. Whoa. I was going to say that shot is all about practice. Scott, how much have you oh, been able to man. practice that? Well, these bunkers are just a different kind of sand and, and the ball comes out hot occasionally and you know it, it obviously it did there it had no spin. Now he rolled down into what looks like a worse lie. Th this is where Southern Hills is getting you. He buried you know it rolled over the green now it's into a that looks to be an ugly lie. Yeah, now potentially six comes into play. Yes it does. Only benefit to Tiger here is that it is on the upslope and it's a pretty severe slope so he can open the face up and kind of slam it into the back of the ball and should be able to create some loft. I mean is, there, is it into the grain a little bit into the grain. He's looking lower. Oh, there it was. It. That was the one. Good recovery shot. From that was Woods. an excellent shot. That's just another one of those double breakers. Yeah, exactly. One of the double breakers and the really challenging part of this putt is past the hole that looks like an infinity pool where it just right. drops off the edge of the world. And the, yeah. 
So subconsciously you're saying, yeah, just creep it up to the front edge. Don't get too feisty here. Well, it's got to go a little right early and then maybe straighten. It'll go right the first six or eight feet and it, it, it wants to straighten, but it, not until the hole does it actually straighten. Got it there. Boy. You called it. After watching Tiger's ball roll, you know, kind of come out of the bunker hot and then roll all the way down the hill, yeah, you don't want to get too aggressive going that direction. All right, Ned, if this putt drops, and we potentially have history in the making with Rory McIlroy, so he's five under on his round. This would get it to six under with the par five fifth up next. Yeah. And this one's a little bit squirrely because it's going to go left early and then the last foot it'll siphon back off the back of the bunker and head to the right. Right. That's what I was. So it's another one of the somewhat double double breaker. Yep. It's probably not outside the hole though is it. No not with the proper speed. Roy to extend his lead to three. Another par on the card, Rory five under through thirteen. Straight in from here. It's for Tiger to close out his bogey on the fourth. Twice now. This missed fairway off the tee with the stinger has led to bogeys for Tiger Woods. Yeah, he, I think he was shaking his head there, thinking the same thing. So a lot of fireworks with Rory McIlroy when he's had driver in hand so far today. For more, here's Ryan Rohde. Thanks, guys. So Rory McIlroy taking advantage of the club that he swings best, which is the driver. So one reason he's able to do that is he hits up on the golf ball on the driver, and that creates a launch and a spin that's going to launch higher, spin less, and go further. So the way he does that is he makes sure to set up, get behind the ball, Low point's going to be behind and hit up. Just like that, back to you guys. Makes it look easy, Scott. Well, it did look easy. Maybe he's on the wrong golf course. Nobody's making it look as easy as this guy, though. And this is one of those ones, George, where he can really let it eat here because he might be able to get there if he can hit it in the fairway. Yeah, it's deceiving when it says 665 on the card. This was with Maverick McNeely yesterday. He was not exactly like top 10 in driving distance on the PGA Tour, and he put it five yards off the front of the green at two. Yeah, it, it should be helping a little bit. A little bit left to right help, but Rory will probably take, he'll try to take it right over the edge of the trees. That's where he's aiming. Here's the leader, McElroy. I think it's if it cuts at all, it's perfect. And then the fairway. Absolutely. Tattoo. Tenth fairway McElroy's now hit. Look 
Kai White. I mean, he's just so much power in his lower body. Gets down into it. Just punishing that golf ball. I don't know if I've ever seen. I mean, I've, we're sitting here watching. I don't know if I've seen anybody drive it better than this. Maybe in my life. Certainly not this distance in the fairway. Now it's Jordan speak. Toad it. Gosh darn. Relax! Relax! Sneaky might have worked out. Oh, hit trees. No, oh, stay out of that. Tiger. Jordan doesn't need you and I, George. He told you everything you need to know right there. He towed it, clipped the trees, he'll dropped down it. on the bunker. He'll analyze it, and he'll turn the par five fifth into a three shot hole. Yeah. I wonder if Tiger will try to bite off as, surely he won't bite off as much as Rory did. A little further, it's perfect, right over the bunker. Chase up that right hand side somehow stays just short of the fairway bunker. Yeah, that, that other bunker. See a little hitch and Tigers giddy up now on the par five fifth. Two over on his round. Five holes to go. Rory McElroy leading at five under. Tiger Woods has had an impact on a lot of players, not just growing up and embracing the game of golf, but those actually in the field here at the PGA Championship. Wyatt Worthington's making his second PGA Championship appearance this week, more than 20 years ago. A chance encounter with Tiger changed the course of Worthington's life forever. I did go to Methodist University uh, in North Car Fayetteville, North Carolina. I tied the course record once or twice before, and Unfortunately, I never played one collegiate round of golf, and yet you're still talking to someone who's played in a major championship without playing at one collegiate tournament. I've met Tiger July 29, 2001. Um, that's a very specific date, uh, but I was a first tee kid from Columbus, Ohio. I was one of the lucky kids to have that once in a lifetime experience. Um, so I have met him. I've also crossed paths with him, but I never really had a you know chance to you know just have a conversation and you know play a round of golf and just get to know him a little bit better as well too. But I would look forward to that um, if that day ever presents itself. There's the Team at 20, Wyatt Worthington will tee off at 12.30 local time with Ryan Brem and Minwoo Lee. Of the team at 20, Ryan Vermeer off to a good start, one over through nine. Some of the notable names from that team at 20 currently on the course for this opening round. What a story, never played a tournament in college and now is in his second major the PGA Championship for Wyatt Worthington. That's pretty, that is actually very amazing. I mean, that is getting into the game and getting pretty good without having kind of like the... The normal Yeah, trajectory. the normal trajectory of, you know, you play high school, college, blah, 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 yeah. Or if you're Scott Verplank, you just win a wow. PGA Tour event in college. I wouldn't go that far. I actually... Skip met, a couple steps. I actually met Wyatt's mom and dad yesterday. Really? Very nice people. Great. So it's a cool story that he's here. Jordan Spieth well back now for a second. Pretty lucky that ball didn't go in the bunker. Big slice Tiger has to hit here. Got going too far right. That tree really gets in the way. Just trying to lay up to that next bunker up there.
Woods carving it around the tree. And if you saw on the left hand side of the screen, Rory McElroy, well up there. McElroy, it is tee shot. Get this 369 yards. <laughs> it's 288 into the par five. You can't surprise me anymore, George. <laughs> wow. So it's he can get there and that you can see that. Yeah, he's got his two iron, I believe. between the bunkers that if it's hot enough it can roll up through there. This is why they're waiting. Bonus coverage Victor Hoblin. Short miss for Hoblin. So George you heard him talking. The miss is the front bunker, so he's not going to hit three without it and go over because then you're bad shape. So Hoblin even through 14 on his round five back and leader McElroy. That needs to stay short if it's going left. And. Oh, but not one. Oh. It's okay there, though. It's I thought it was just going to come into the cut. It looked like it was speeding right now, just last second. Yeah. Another solid shot. He's hit an iron from 288. You know, and just flushed it. But he's in a good spot right there. He'll have a little upslope in the sand and an upslope on the green. So I would expect him to get it fairly close. So we're not going prisoner of the moment here. You really say uh, and you've been around the game a long time. This is one of the best driving rounds that you've ever seen. I can't remember one where a guy hit it that far and hit it. I mean it's windy. It's a major championship. Um, you know it's first round with Tiger Woods and Jordan Spieth and the guy is is I mean he's outclassing the field off the tee. I mean I, I yes I, I can't remember anybody driving it like this. You watched a lot more golf than I have. I've played well, you, a lot you more. You played a lot more than I have. But you've seen a lot more guys hit it. I don't recall playing with someone who hit it like that. Like I said earlier, it looks like vintage Roy McElroy, where he can just dismantle the course off the tee. Well, we were wondering about their strategies, and I think we figured it out. Roy's hitting driver. Yeah, Roy's basically playing bully ball. Yeah. Just getting driver as far down as he can. And Tiger's playing his game. His problem is he's missed two fairways with his stinger. And that's basically got him a couple over par. Because otherwise he'd be he'd be fine. He'd be in good shape. Yeah, he is playing bully ball. Pretty impressive. It's kind of like one of those deals if you, you know, smoke them if you got them. <laughs> if you can do it, you should do it. Woods from 138 yards out for his third. Should be a good Leave. solid wedge. Leave. Leave. Right there. Stay. Not bad. Under the hole. Little right to left up the hill. Another birdie putt for Woods. Yes. Yeah. 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 
left. Correct, yep. Dollar fifteen for Jordan. Wind off the left. Strong wedge coming. around the stick. Yeah, that was one of his better shots that he's hit in the last couple hours, so maybe he can convert one here. See if Spieth has a finishing kick in store. Yeah, that was, I mean, that was all over it. Jordan just hasn't been sharp today and while he's made a few mistakes just surprising he only has one birdie. Yeah it you know when you're playing next to this guy who's just putting on a you know putting on master a master class. Yes a master class it makes you you know you can't you just have to play your game because you don't want to get caught up in how bad you look compared to this other guy. But hey, listen Jordan kicks this one in and makes and maybe makes another one. Get back out, get his head right, get his swing right. He's fine. You know, he's done it before. I'm, pr I'm predicting he'll do it again. This, this is delicate but doable for McElroy. Just throw it left of the hole. Should be able to land it between the flag and the edge of the green. Yeah, this should be very, very doable for him. Boy, just couldn't spin it. Kind of one of those deals. Same thing we've been seeing. Just had a conversation with Rory's father, and he had a big grin on his face, as you might expect. But I said, I, I love the pace at which he's playing and how decisive he has been, just getting into the shot and hitting it. And Jerry looked at me and said, well, isn't that what you're supposed to do? <laughs> Yes, Jerry's a, a fine gentleman. A legend. Maybe he's been helping Rory with his uh, mental game and his attitude and his decision making. Just get in there and hit it. It's Rory's parents, Jerry and Rosie, are, are two of the best. Rory told me a funny story a few years back how this is before his family was spending more time in Florida that they would visit for a couple of weeks during the holidays and they would always go out to dinner and go out to eat. Instead, Jerry's a long, long time bartender in Ireland, and that by the end of two weeks, Jerry would be on a first name basis at every place they would go. And then Rory said the rest of the year, instead of being excited to see Rory come back into the restaurant or bar, they would just say, hey, where's your dad? Where's Jerry? I I have lived that, too, George. I think that 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 is Jerry in a nutshell right there. Once you know him, you're going to be friends forever. And he is, uh, yeah, he is a, he's a good man. So part of the unique routing now at Southern Hills while we're waiting. The sixth tee right behind the fifth green. Yeah, there's a lot of congestion around there. And probably more so since the Tiger Woods group is coming up. So there'll be a few more spectators. Speaking of Tiger Woods, can he claw back another birdie? Up the hill, trying to work from right to left. There's a lot of slope when it gets to the cup. Boy. We had the little bonus coverage of Hovland right in front of that and his, he missed it a high side too so maybe there's not quite as much break there as they're reading. Well that's the thing isn't it you know. You read the the greens the same at this level and it just looks like it's got to snap at the end. 
Yeah, you know, Ned, I think that's the greens are difficult here. That's part of the equation. This one for Rory, we saw his bunker shot skate past the hole. So we know how fast it is. And now, of course, he's coming back up the slope, but this too. He's got to break hard at the cup. He's a little higher up the green, so it should break a little more. Six birdie on the round for Rory McIlroy. And that went in with some conviction right there, didn't it? it had some pace. Rory six under through 14. Mentioned before the start of this round, there have been 17 rounds of 63 all time at the PGA Championship. Twice we've seen that at Southern Hills. Tiger Woods in 2007, second round. Raymond Floyd back in 82 in the first round. Rory have to go one under his last four to shoot 63, two under the last four to tie the lowest ever round in a major. It's Brandon Grace back in 2017 at the Open. You can't count them out with what we've seen so far today. It's just, it's been so impressive. I, you know, the seventh hole, the eighth hole is not really what you'd call a birdie hole. The ninth is though, if he, if, especially if he hits driver up there and has 75 yards to the flag. So you never know. Well, for Jordan, this is why you took all the time on those other putts. Trying to get your stroke in order, but just not yet comfortable. Another miss for speed. Yeah, he's just not he's not seeing good pictures in his head. Oh, really on anything, it doesn't appear. Three shot lead now for Rory McElroy. He's at six under. Will Zalatoris, Tom Hoagie tied for second at three under. I mean, the scoring average right now is 72 and a half. So if Roy parred out, he'd beat the scoring average by eight and a half shots. Uh, yeah, I, and I, I think the scoring average is probably going to go up. Would agree. Um, yeah, I don't think it's going to get any easier as the day goes on. Yeah, it may be shaping up to be one of the best opening rounds anybody's ever had in a major championship. He obviously has found something mentally to change his approach or his whatever his feelings or thoughts were taking the taking the heat off, basically taking the pressure off himself to just go out and play. It's worked beautifully today. Rory was talking earlier in the week about a couple majors. I mean, won the U.S. Open by eight, the PGA Championship ten years ago. Akiwa won that by eight. So you can't really plan going in to have a week like that. But if you get off to a fast start and you have belief and confidence in your game, then you know you can push and extend your lead. I mean, it's got to be kind of 
scary now for the rest of the field. They know he's capable of it. We haven't seen it in a while in a major. Right. But he's already at six under with a three shot lead in this first round. And it's just like you said, just going to get tougher this afternoon. Yeah, I mean, it's way too early to, to you know, make any kind of bold, bold predictions. But yes, he obviously is. He's, he has that gear. He sure does. He's one done it. You know, if he did it once, yeah, you go. Oh, that was awesome. Well, he did it twice. You know, <laughs> one by eight twice. That's a different level. Um, and that being said, that was a decade plus it was, ago. Yeah, it was a decade ago. So maybe this is the rekindling of Rory's. I mean, it wouldn't shock me if he if he went on if he did win this week, or even if he didn't win this week, but he went on and started winning majors again because there's not many people that can do what he's doing so far today and make it look like he's making it look. It's not that he really hadn't done anything, but you know, like out of the ordinary. I mean, he hadn't made a bunch of long bombs or chipped in or. No, he's made a bunch of putts in five to fifteen feet. Yeah, he's just done the way you're supposed to. But this the last two rounds that Roy McIlroy has put together in majors. Remember that 864 the Masters. So this is last 32 holes in majors. He's 14 under par. That's very impressive. I, don't, I mean I that that doesn't happen very often either. That's uh, that's that is golf in his ball. He's still got <laughs> some shots to hit here to finish up today but so far, it's been really, really impressive. And two observations here, fellows, from the sixth tee. You can't really feel the wind. Uh, you're kind of tucked back in here in this intimate setting. Uh, and so you have to look in the trees and you have to trust that it's there because you can see the flag up by the green. It's whistling. And then the second observation, Rory McIlroy's had a club out for the past couple of minutes and it's the longest time that he's done this he's taken practice swings and a little bit out of the routine of the day. Well the only thing that matters is when he got into his routine just like five seconds ago if he's just seeing the same pictures same thoughts that's the kind of the, the guts of the routine. Roy leading by three. over not terrible I mean it's such a long what club are they hitting there Ned six five yeah let's five. see what Jordan comes up with because that wind is pumping now up top yeah I don't think that you can other like you got to land it a, a, a step or two on the front in between the bunkers to get it to stay on I would imagine It's a seven for McElroy, or for uh, Spieth, rather. Yeah, big seven iron. Well, that's a pretty good shot. And it hit soft. He was talking about landing it in that upslope right there. Kind of what you need to do. That pin is Ned. You're out there. That pin is not real accessible from 220. No, it looks like it's not even on the green. To be honest with you, if it longer this green is not bad. It's kind of back off the upslope, but the thing is, it's only about 10 yards long, and then there's out of bounds. Right, and the left bunker is sloping away from you to where that hole location is. So, kind of front middle is is where you at least want to have your base. Tiger's turn. Tiger. 
Oh, that hit awful soft. Good thing. Our feature group, Tiger Woods, Jordan Spieth, and the leader of the PGA Championship, Rory McIlroy. Spieth Woods tied at two over, T38. McIlroy, been a birdie barrage from Rory McIlroy. George Savarikis with Scott Verplank on the 12th. This is when Rory got the party started. Yeah, after a huge drive, little kind of sawed off knockdown wedge, which obviously he's been working on. Kick in range. Remember, Rory started his day on the 10th, so the 12th was his third hole. Par 5, 13th. Here in two on the 600 and 60 yard, 30 yard hole, and he's there in two, and he simple bunker shot up to it for another kick in. Tell me if you're sensing a theme here. Birdie's on 12 and 13, then the par three, 14th. After a beautiful high iron shot right over the flag, he had an equally impressive putt. The putter has entered the chat. Three straight birdies. McElroy not done yet, trying to make it four in a row. Straight up the hill. Good. Rory now making the turn to the front nine on the second. After a, a, another brilliant drive and a beautiful seven iron kind of holding it down there, knocked it right in the middle. When you are five under and you're feeling it, that's when you start rolling it in with some pace. Yeah, and he was up there by the green and two on this 600 and what, 65 yard par five. Rory birdieing both the par fives. Yeah, so that's. He is playing fantastic. Second to the sixth. Yeah, tough little chip across the green here. Got to catch it clean. I think that grain got him just a little bit there. I think that's what he, yeah, he's sweeping through it like it just grabbed just enough. This kind of, this kind of Bermuda is just it's just so perfect for for grain. It looks like you got a great lie, and then your club gets in there, and it just starts digging a little bit, and then that then that changes everything because chipping is all about how solid can you hit it. Doesn't matter what club you use, just how solid can I make contact. And guys are struggling with solid contact off this Bermuda, just because of the just enough grain to make it. You know, we've seen it. Guys trying to putt through it hadn't got up. Watch that here with. I thought it was so I, thought I, thought you, I thought it was too. I thought you were stepping in. No, there. sorry. Okay, thank you. Just directing a little traffic out here. Tiger looked like he was stepping into play, so Jordan hit the pause button. It is Jordan to play first, though. And he's got another interesting putt. Scott is a little ripple in the green that his ball is going to crawl up as it works from left to right. And then once it gets to the cup, it'll flatten out a little bit and we'll pick up some pace. Yeah, this one is it, amazing how the subtle effects of the bunkers on the greens are around here. But they really have some, they really are an influence. Speed for birdie. Just hadn't been sharp. Hadn't had speed very good. Hadn't played great. But. A long way to go. Tiger can afford to be aggressive with this. He's up the hill. And once it reaches the cup, it'll start moving a little bit. But this is a good one to try to hold. Yeah, he didn't have too much fringe to go through. It doesn't appear. It's six birdies so far on the six woods. Kind of bounce coming out of there, it looked like. It's just that little that little hint of grain that's in there. Just it's hard to deal with. For the viewer at home, how challenging is it to judge grain? Well, that's the whole problem is you're, you're that's why guys are like with those We've seen it, and we saw it on those two, on Roy's chip and Tiger's putt. You're you make a decision on how much it's going to slow up the ball when you're putting it, like Tiger was, or how much it's going to grab the club if you're chipping like Rory was, and you go with it. And sometimes you don't get it right. 
you know, but at this level, obviously, you're looking for precision all the time, and that's what makes it hard. Is it's not as predictable as say chipping off bent grass or chipping off bluegrass or something. Well, if Rory has dreams of a 63, this putt's going to need to drop. Shouldn't be a ton to it. For par, first bogey of the day. McElroy slides back to five under, three holes to go. Lead two. Nothing that would require this much conversation. I guess, you know, when you do have some doubt on the greens, it's nice to have just confirmation. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? And again, there's, there's really not a whole lot in this. Yeah, no, you have to make a decision and be committed. Um, not, that's hard to do a lot of days. Another par miss for Jordan Spieth. Just looks completely out of sorts with the putter. Yeah, that's I. Ned, like you and I, just that much chatter and there's too many things going on in his head. Well, we've all been there. Right? Oh yeah. We're, oh we're, yeah. It's not like an indictment on him because everybody. That's what. That's why golf's so flipping hard. But yeah, there's just too much chatter, too much stuff going on to be clean. Yeah. Kind of interesting. That's what Rory's been so great at today is there looks like nothing's going on other than pick the club, hit the shot. Tiger with the par, still at two over, T36. Roy, like I said, leading by two. Jordan Spieth now at three over, and a tie for 47th. We are waiting on the seventh, and massive changes on the seventh to what we saw in years past. Scott, they've added 105 yards on this hole. Yeah, they moved the green back about 60 yards, I would say, and brought the creek in closer on the right. And then they also moved the tee back to where they're playing an actual tee box that is not more than two or three steps off the back fringe of the sixth green. So, I mean, this hole being 484, it was a pretty hard hole when it was about 410. You know, with the fairway, you hit into a side slope fairway, water on the right, trees on the left. They've, they've brought it to modern golf. Um, guys are having to hit driver here now. And the fairway is a little bit wider, so it's playable, but it's a it's changed this hole a lot. Case in point with Tiger Woods. That's gonna catch the right rough. Yeah, maybe beyond the right rough. Yeah, he's going to need some sort of decent line. He's going to have a couple of trees in his way. How about this, Scott? During a practice round on Tuesday, McElroy actually hit it into the tributary here, the little creek, all the way through the fairway. This is his first three wood of the day, isn't it? Except for number 10. He remembers that, Ned. That's why he's going with three wood. See Rory's response after his first bogey. This is snap hook to the left. Clipped a tree and fell almost straight down. He's going to have 
a long yeah. way in, but he might have a shot. He might be over there next to one of the, like, spec your spectator buildings or something over there. We might be getting some sort of relief away from that. Couldn't tell for sure. Twin Jordan could stand to have a nice drive here. Headed down the right center, taking the breeze. That will be ideal. Well, that's, I think that's what the other two had in mind. Spee's been pretty solid off the tee. It's been the putter that's been letting him down. So we've seen a few errant tee shots out of this group this week. Got to be curious, Scott, you know the history of yelling four. <laughs> no. Why is it four? You know what? I, I, I should know this. If you trace the lineage, it goes back to Scotland. It goes back to when, you know, golf. All right was invented. Oh boy, he's pulled this one wildly left. I don't know the meaning of it exactly, but uh, I wish people would shout it more, to be honest. Just like they say about golf, all of their four-letter words were used. I think uh, four is an easy thing to shout. I just know in golf, when you yell four, that means hide and cover. I feel like I knew this, the actual why we say the word four, but I'll be lying to you. I don't know now. I, I forgot. Uh, what do you think, Scott? Uh, you know, George, I'm not, I don't really know. I don't have a good guess. I figured it was just a euphemism for another word that starts with F, so they went with four instead to clean it up. Well, if I had enough foresight to know that, I would know that, but I don't. I, I'm not sure. More space off the tee this year, though, with how they've widened fairways from an average of 27 yards to, to 40 yards. Oh, yeah. I mean, they, they've done that, obviously, with the, you know, the length. They've added a little more room to drive it, which is that makes sense. McElroy and Woods missing the fairway on the seventh. Yeah, they're, so Tiger might have a little tree trouble over there now. <laughs> I am in route to go check on Tigers. I just took a look at Rory's. What a break. He has about 165 to cover the bunker. Clean shot and a downtrodden lie where the gallery has been standing. So he'll be able to be aggressive if he so chooses. Huge break for McElroy. Well, that's what he was hoping for. And you know, it is kind of beaten down over there in the grass hitting his thick, so. Have to move the gallery out of the way and let him let him keep playing. It takes a little extra time when you get the tiger size galleries that are following this group to get up. Hey, got to back up a little bit. Come on, back it up, yeah. clear a path. You're right, George, and nobody wants to give up their spot. You're fighting for turf. Yeah, there's a difference between the Tiger Gallery and the, most yeah, of the other ones. Right side. Just so I can see the green. Ned, is that tree? Are you over there, or have you seen it? I now? am over here, and that tree is directly in the way. Can he get over it? I think he can get over it, but not all the way not to the to green. Not the green, yeah. He could. In a past life, hit that big slice, yeah, but, get it onto the green. I just don't rough, know that he has that shot. Well, out of the rough, too, it's going to be harder to make it curves. Yeah. Since you're not going to be able to spin. And there's really no place to run it up on this hole. It's a very, very small area between the bunker and the water. And left here is not a good miss with this whole location. 
No, unfortunately, I've been on the right side of this hole before and tried some of those shots that we're talking about, and I didn't really have much luck. But he is Tiger Woods, so we'll see what happens. Are you going left? Take it through. Okay. Back up here, guys. All the way up. So uh, Tiger thinks through his second. We're going to go from one side of the seventh hole to the other with Rory McIlroy. Yeah, he seems to have a clear shot. It's really, really going to depend on what kind of contact he can make here, George. If he feels confident that he can hit it clean enough to have normal spin, then he's, you know, he's great. But if, if he thinks there's any jump or anything in it, then it kind of changes the whole, the whole program for what he's looking for. Chicken. Who's going to go first? I think it's Tiger's shot. Yeah, Rory seems to now be full on weight mode. It is kind of hard. Oh, <laughs> drive off two. It is kind of hard to see you, all the people. You know, Tiger's galleries are huge. You can't really see back and forth at each other, so they're. They're just assuming. Talking about right into his kitchen. Yeah. I was just a couple of yards away from him. You see that ball right behind where Tiger's standing now. Is he going up and over, Ned? He's going low. Tiger's left. That's for cutting. And we'll find the front left bunker. That's not bad. That's really about as good as you can do from there. There's just nothing to see. Now Rory digging in. Big gust of wind as he settles over it. Wants to carry this about 165 yards. It's out to the right and riding the wind back to the cup. Good shot. McElroy onto the green. Yeah, so his lie was clean enough to go ahead and hit a, you know, what would be considered a standard shot. So well done. Here's Jordan Smith, just 139 left into the seventh. It's a good time for him to make a birdie. He's got a good number. <laughs> Solid shot. We'll have a good look on the seventh green. Not often you see Tiger Woods flinch. But this moments ago, the tee shot, corner of his eye, got the quick little stutter step. He identified it pretty quick, though, because he was already moving back in when the ball hadn't got to him yet. So that's, hey. Good peripheral vision. There you go. He's an athlete. <laughs> yeah, there's, uh, these holes are, you know, there's congestion spots. Not this, not really that that's one of them, but yeah, it's not got, a traditional one. No, that's not the a traditional congestion spot. Second and the seventh. You got to keep your head up. Keep your head on a swivel. There you go. I'll have to find out what type of lie Tiger was able to draw in the, in the yeah. green side bunker here. Hopefully it rolled up into the upper part where you can be a little on the upslope. Well, it's it's clean, but it's not on the upslope and it's going to be below his feet in four or five oh. inches. Yeah, and that green slopes away from you right there. 
And every bunker shot that he's hit today has come off a little faster than yeah. seemingly he expected. Back into the wind a little bit, maybe? Uh, the, you can see the flag is twisted in on itself, so the wind's kind of bouncing everywhere. But yeah. if anything, it's it's not going to affect the shot. Yeah. Better. Yeah, he did it there. He just he used the just trajectory because the spin wasn't really available, and he just got it out and let the green take it down there. Good chance for Woods to save par on the seventh. Well, that'd be a good save from where he was off the tee because he really did hit a pretty pretty nice second shot there to get into that bunker. There's really not a lot you can see or do from there. Well, I know he had only been one for four in sand saves to this point. Well, he kind of he, he kind of went. I think he went without knowing he couldn't spin it. So he went with a little more kind of the chunk and run type deal. Um, when he won here, Scott, he was only 50 percent out of the bunkers. It, and these bunkers are difficult, as you said. Yeah, they are. I mean, they, I don't think he hit it in very many of them, though. He was five of ten. Well, yeah. well, he should have won by more then. It's good effort there. Perfect, great speed. Rory's had no trouble with the adjusting to the speeds today. That was a fortuitous par. That tee shot could have gone a lot of bad places. Yes, it could have, but it didn't. You never know. McElroy needing a birdie, birdie finish for a round of 63, 500 through 16. Jordan needs this for a little spark. Anything to get going his way with the putter. Well, this is a golden opportunity to do that. I mean, it's right up the hill, working a little bit from right to left. For a right handed putter, this is exactly what you would dial up if you needed to make one. And how tangible do you think momentum is round to round? Like, if he gets this to drop and goes one under the last three, is there any carryover or is that overrated? Yeah, it'll make his attitude, well, it'll, you know, Show to himself that you know it's not over. You're still you're still going. Speed for birdie. Listen, anything at this point you're you're grasping at anything to turn it around to go positive. So if he'll finish strong, then he'll feel a lot better about tomorrow. Second birdie on the day, two over through 16. This is a big putt too. It seems to be. Does he appear to be struggling a little bit yeah. more with his right leg then? Yeah, you know, it all goes back to that shot that he hit the second at 18. Right. He tweaked something, and then on the second shot here, you know, he had to right. spin so hard on it to hit that low cut. That certainly had put a lot of torque on that lower right leg. Yeah, and then he actually had a little bit of an awkward side hill in the bunker, which is not as easy either. Sand save on the seventh for Woods. I'm solid. He remains at two over with two to go. At the top of the leaderboard, Rory McElroy's at five under. Tom Ogie now four under, one back. Matt Kuchar and Will Zella Torres in a tie for third at three under. Sander Shoffley in the house, 268. So the easy breezy uh, par three eighth, just 249 yards. That's it, and it is into the wind as well. So just just for good measure, it's it's back in right to left, I believe. Two birdies today, 
one chip in and one, one chip in and, and one, one one putt. Yeah, one twenty footer or something. How many players have hit the green? Well, the average proximity is forty seven feet away, so lots of balls in the left bunker. Um, Second hardest hole on the course, three point four scoring average. Three point four four, yes. Twenty eight pars, twenty four bogeys and one other, so this would be labeled not a birdie hole. You kind of feel like it'd be one that Hogan might just lay it up short and right 10 yards short of the green and then work from there. Well, I wouldn't totally disagree except that the guys are it's so difficult chipping around here because of these the grainy lies that you don't um, you just had to hit a golf shot here and that what a good hole is you got to stand up and hit a shot. I just wonder though this green complex is it meant to hold 250 plus yard shot. Well no but. Were guys supposed to be hitting irons from 250 or rescue so it's kind of that's where we're at. I'm on your side Ned but. This is a bear of a par three. And the only way you get it close, right, is to land it on the front right. And trick and use the green to help you. And use that wind, that's right. Yeah. yeah, the whole right side of the green slopes towards the middle, so. He's got to hammer this. Been a while since Jordan Speeth had the honor out of his threesome. Let's go, Jordan! And this out to the right. Come on! And actually almost fading. That was a weird ball flight. We expected that's it to take enough. the breeze and it never did. Yeah. Well, that's a good shot. There hadn't been many on the green. The galleries on both sides and then the big grandstands behind this eighth green. It's got a big advantage to be able to hit iron when it's windy like this on a hole of this length versus a hybrid or some type of fairway wood. Oh, I, yeah, I, I agree. You ought to be able to keep this down. This is almost kind of a stinger. Light the candle. Really struggling there with staying upright almost. The tiger losing his footing on the follow through there. Four iron for McElroy. Roy, the leader at five under. This is headed a little left. Double crossed it. One at three on the eighth green. Tiger clearly in pain, and you can see why with this replay. What did you notice with that swing? Well, I really don't sure he, it looked like it was when the step back is when he kind of put the strain on his leg. <coughs> it kind of was the swing that he's been hit, but he's hit today with that two iron or three iron kind of trying to cover it and then blocking it. I don't know. While our feature group makes their way up to the eighth, we're going to take a short break here on ESPN Plus. We'll be back in just a minute. Group four, Deki Matsuyama, Xander Shoffley, who had already opened with a 68, Tony Finau, group four, currently in the house. Second now for Tiger Woods to the par three eighth. 
off the downslope so he can just get it out and it should run to the hole. Yeah, he's got enough green to work with. Boy, that one really came out. That had to be a little bit of a thin. That was surprising. I thought he was surely going to go for the chunk and run. He was on the downslope and the ball was actually sitting down a little bit. I think he was trying to. I think that was actually a, a that had to be a groove low on the face to come out that hot and fly it that far because there's no there's no way to fly it that far and stop it. Now McElroy's lie is clean. The ball is below his feet back into the breeze. But if he can get this in six or eight feet that will be some kind of impressive. Yeah because everything is kind of repelled off the nose of that bunker. Marvelous. Yeah, very well done there. Nice effort from McElroy. Tiger's probably out. Oh, between him and Jordan Spieth. For Roy McElroy in his career, his first round scoring average is about a shot higher than what we see the rest of the week out of him. Today he's five under through 16. Pretty good look at par here on the 17th. So likely around somewhere between. 64 to 66. It looked like it was Jordan to go, but Tiger's ready. So he will putt back up the hill here, and this again will kick off that bunker that Rory just played from as it creeps up the slope. Yeah, back up the hill, kind of against the wind. Just out of kick in range. Well, now he was before he had that bunker shot Scott was adjusting the sleeve that he has around that lower right leg and you could just tell it. Very uncomfortable. Yeah I, I, I have no doubt that it's very uncomfortable. I mean it's amazing that he's here. So big swinger right to left here. If you hit it with the right pace it is. Go down the hill and then flattening. Speed will go ahead. Finish out his par on the eighth. Yeah, solid, solid par. I mean, that hole is going to right right along with 18 is going to be right up there as the hardest ones they got today. Scoring average right now a little more than 72 and a quarter. Jordan's two over with one hole to go. This one's a little tricky up the hill and it wants to work from his toes back to his heels but if you hit it too firm it'll race right through that. Yeah it shouldn't break a ton but man they they carry Haig is really good at finding awkward spots and a big gust of breeze now. And he did exactly. I think the breeze may have held that out a little bit. Exactly what you said. Second bogey, the last three holes for McElroy. And George, I'm just going to go back to the tee on the sixth. Remember, I said he looked like he had gotten out of his routine. He'd stood there with the club in 
his hand for a while, just as if he was thinking about what was happening. And since then, the bogey on six, the bad swing off of seven, and a bogey here at eight. Yeah, you. I think you nailed it. That's part of, hard part of tournament golf. You know, you got a lot of time in between shots, and you can't really let your mind wander. Roy now tied for the lead at four under with Tom Hoagie. Bogey putt for Woods. Woods drops back to three over par. Our featured group on their way to the last hole of the day, the par four ninth. Just 390 yards, but playing over par today. Well, it's back into the wind, uphill, and the green is very difficult to navigate. Very sloped. So. Jordan looks like he's going with a cut driver. Yep. He has the big dog out. Yeah, there's two ways. I mean, there's you either lay up to the bunkers or you just do all, just try to blow it past them and keep it in the fairway. So it's kind of two ways to approach the tee shot. This drifting down the left side of the fairway should be nice, and it is. Another low bullet from Spieth. Deal. And Tiger looks like he's sticking to his game plan, which doesn't surprise me. Glass half full for speed. He had 10 out of 14 fairways today. Yeah, that was a good call on. I thought he would putt better around here than he has so far today, but that's not. That's driving the ball pretty good. You, you can't count him out, right? If he hits that many fairways. You get the feeling that at some point you'll have a round where everything goes in. You would, you would think. Another stinger for Tiger. And this headed right. Yeah, that's, just, that's the shot he's hit like the last two or three times. Hits the tree and <laughs> scampers right back in the center of the fairway. Just guessing, George, but I would say that that would be the effect of his right leg, either not holding, can't, he's not been able to push off it every single time, and that would, you know, kind of hanging back. You're going to block him over there. Co-leader McElroy with driver. Sit, sit. Corner. Starting down the right side and then started turning. Well, he got a pretty good line. Thoughts on what we've seen out of Tiger Woods today? Had that fast start, two under through five. Um, I, I, I mean, I, he's played, he's hung in there, is what he's done because it's obvious that his, he's having a little struggle with his right leg and it may like Ned said started on 18 there because I mean like on 18 he just power to drive right down there to the end but hadn't been the same since he had that awkward stance and hit it there. Um, it's similar to the weekend at Augusta. Yeah and that yeah I mean I, I don't I don't know I you know you can't I you can't I can't speak for him but yes it's it's different the first six seven eight holes he looked at a different level than he does now. You wonder going forward how much that will be the new normal for Tiger. 
how hard it will be to swing for 18 holes with freedom versus having stretches where you see glimpses of, of what he's capable of before either fatigue or soreness or the, the pain threshold starts to be maxed with what he has to deal with day to day in that leg. Yeah, I think that's probably the, the biggest part of the equation on how he's going to be able to play is how that's going to hold up. I mean, I, I've been through a ton of injuries myself and they're all different and they're all different animals and they they never get well as fast as you want them to. And they, it's just, it's something that you have to deal with. And I, it looks to me like he's hitting these stingers to the right. I've never seen him do that before. I and mean, the hard, he's been automatic when he hits that, when that stinging two iron. One of the hard things about injuries, as you know, I've had both my hips operated on, and you don't know what's going to show up day to day. So you actually need different golf swings to be able to accommodate for how you're feeling. Uh, with back and hips and for Tiger's leg, you know, every day presents a different golf swing. I think that's a great point. I mean, you you kind of play with what you got, and obviously what he's used to, he doesn't have what he's used to having. Doesn't mean he can't get it back, but he's obviously showing a lot of guts to even be playing because it's because uh, it's fairly obvious that he's he's ha he's somewhat handicapped by that right leg. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I mean, and it, I just, I can't. We find, saw it yesterday. You're yeah, seeing it today. Yeah. We saw it at the Masters. Yeah, I just, I can't see any other reason after that he's hitting this, his, what he, is his go-to shot. And he's hit three or four really bad ones today. I can't remember him hitting three or four bad ones in his career. So, yeah, all part of the process, though. He, I'm sure he only feels like the only way he's going to get any better is to be out here playing in these events. And we love having him, don't we? Absolutely. Well, hit the tree, kick back in the fairway. That was the good news. Bad news is he's 190 out, 10 yards uphill, and at least a club and a half for the breeze. Well, See if he can make a decent swing here, what he's capable of, and get it on the green and get out of here. Tiger like once again well, favoring that right leg, and that is well deep. That is not a good spot right there either. If Jordan can hit one in here tight and make birdie, it would probably change his whole approach for tomorrow. I mean, it's gotten a little better since he did make a birdie, but but just one shot and that's that well, big a change. Well, one over, yeah. I mean, yeah. There's a big difference between uh, one and two over par in a major championship. You know, one shot can change everything, right? So. He's got a, as Ned said, and you said, he's got to feel better. He's driving it pretty, pretty good. He's got to figure out what he's doing with putting. 100 yards on the ground. Give it another seven for the uphill. Give it another seven for the breeze. Another 115 effort. Well, so if we can get it on the right level. Oh boy. They both got fooled there, Ned. Both over the green. Well, I was saying the lower on the number because I've done nothing but hit it right over the green. Now McElroy just inside of 100. Nice line, the rough, but it could come out hot. If he's planning on landing it on the front, that might be good. Rory on the back of the green. shot it's been you know even though he's made a couple of bogeys been pretty impressive so Rory's lowest career opening rounds in majors you remember the 2010 open at St. Andrews open with 63 then in the wind a second round 80 
2011 U.S. Open, that 65 went on to win, and the 2011 Masters opened with 65, had that lead into Sunday before uh, 80 on the final round. Right. Today, I mean, a huge step forward for Rory McIlroy. When we had mentioned earlier in the broadcast, hasn't been the leader or co-leader in any round in a major since he last won in 2014. That is a huge step forward. I mean, I, I he's not he's aware of that, but he's not surely he's not he's whatever he's done. He's not focused on that. He's done a great job of just going with his what I'm going to do today, his game plan and his his routine. He hadn't changed it except for maybe like when Ned said when they had another weight. Um, it's little stuff like that is what makes a difference, but he's done a brilliant job today. This one right here, Ned. How? I mean, it's so steep from back there, isn't it? Yeah. This is. Um, gosh, you go from thinking, okay, coming off birdies for Jordan, hanging in there, and then maybe making one here, and as you said, finishing at, at one over. And then for Tiger, I don't even know how you play this shot. Yeah, you, he's going sideways and hoping yeah. to trickle it on the back edge. You got to land it short of the green, I think. Oh, probably. absolutely. Yeah. No. Two bounces. Probably too. I would say yes. It's just so hard. You're trying to get it in the air, so you want to come across the ball, and yeah. he just swiped it. That's just that. That's you know, not on number 18 and on nine here. The t the only place you can't hit it on both of those holes is over the green. This could be a disastrous finish for Tiger. Yeah, it's just a just get punished if you hit it over the green on either one of these holes. Why not just crash one into the flag stick here? I'd like to see it. It's now his fourth. Hold your line and get there. That's pretty good. Right, looking like a bogey on the last and around a 74. Yeah, I think it's just unfortunate. Unfortunate that he seemed to tweak something in his leg because I think he was he came out ready to play. Scott, what do you think here for Jordan? The, the practice strokes indicate he's not going to land it on the green. I don't think you can. I mean, if it if it jumps at all, you, if you and if it jumps and you try to land it on the green, it's going off the front. Yeah, he's just bumping it in there. Trying to make solid contact and I'd say that's that's not bad. I mean, you, you assess the lie. How solid can you hit it and what are you going to get out of it? So I think he basically took some of the guesswork out of it by just making sure he got face on the ball and just bumped it forward out of the heavy stuff. Jordan with that left for around a 72. And this is for McElroy one of those putts that you would love to make. But at the same time you've had a nice round you've played beautifully and you, you don't want to make bogey at the last so. This I imagine when it gets to the cup is barely going to have any speed. I would agree with that just a little right to left breaker. This break more than a cup, you think? Maybe with the speed I'm anticipating. McElroy for birdie. What a finish this would be. That was. Rory gets one back on the last five under 65. Seven birdies today. That was one of the better rounds of golf that it might be the best round of golf we see this week, but that was very, very impressive. Second lowest opening round in a major in Rory's career. Well. what golf fans were hoping to see out of the four-time major champion. 
No, I think everybody's been waiting to see that because all you got to do is go watch him hit balls or anything, and you're like, wow. And today he put on a show. Ned, this has been the danger zone for Jordan Spieth all day. Yeah, I'm kind of nervous for him right now. There's just not much in it. It's just a keep your rhythm up kind of stroke. Yeah, he's just, yeah, he needs to see a clean picture here and just knock it in the middle and get out of here. Golf got smiling. <laughs> Smiling with speed on that one. Sure, and he didn't knock it in the middle, but it did go in. So he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna go back to the drawing board a little bit here between now and tomorrow's round. Two over seventy-two for Jordan Speed. Thirty-three putts. Yeah, he's, that's just not his game. Other end of the spectrum, Tiger. This for bogey. This round of four over 74 with just 26 putts. If he can make this. Yeah. Well, this is. A bit, I mean, they're all big putts, but you know, I think in his mind this is a big putt too. You know, he knows what the scores are like and what they're going to be like. And I know he wants to play all four rounds. Bogey, bogey finish his last two holes. Yes. Just mentioned Titus, second lowest career opening major round. 2011 U.S. Open, he had opened with a 65 one on to win that week by eight. And then look at this putt. Yeah. Beautiful speed, breaking a little right to left. Really, really had no place else to go but in, did it? That was a great, great finish. Very that impressive. Was, Rory had his A game, not just with the driver, but with the putter today. You think Rory's leading at the end of the day? Yes, I would think so. And, and we look at that Will Zalatoris shot four.